I can't leave the house. I'm so embarrassed. Like I didn't even feel like feminine with him. Jordan was like, I don't understand why this is a big deal. The Kardashians wear wigs. Why can't you wear a wig? You're on Forbes 30 under 30. Outside looking in, this couple has mm -hmm. this extremely successful business. Their marriage looks good. This is perfection. Right. Mm -hmm. Were you the happiest you ever were in that moment? The guy that was cleaning our room, he opened up our closet, <laughs> saw the wig hanging there, rented out of our room. Like he thought it was a dead body. After how much pain you went through, I was like, I can't ask you to do that. Yes. I was like, it's on me. I have to be mentally strong. I have to just focus and make sure that I don't. Oh, that's really sweet of you. <laughs> Except for we did accidentally get pregnant the second time, so I don't know how sweet it is. Are you in the Illuminati? I can't tell you. <laughs> we sat down with Danny Austin, who started wearing wigs in her 20s after experiencing rapid hair loss. She documented her journey on Instagram and in 2021 started Divi, a hair care brand that made over $40 million in just the first year. That same year, her and her husband, Jordan, got pregnant by surprise and just like us, became parents to two under two. We flew all the way to Dallas, Texas for this interview. So if you could please consider subscribing, that would really mean a lot. I kind of wanted to open up with a juicy question. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. No, no, no. Did Hit me hard. you take your husband's last name? <laughs> no, she is no, a feminist mine. through and through. We, you took her last name. No, I did not. I did not. Don't Wait, do that to me. I'm sure these guys have actually done that though. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's yeah. probably oh, like a very like modern day thing. But no, I didn't. No way. But I have something even juicier to tell you. Wait, what? Let me tell you this. Wait. <laughs> so I actually was a Ramirez before. It's true. So my family are all Ramirez's. We are not related. We have it's checked. Like, it's like Ann It's like the name Smith, okay? So my mom is Anna Marie Ramirez. All my cousins, all are Ramirez's. When Jordan Facebook messaged me when we first met, Jordan Ramirez, I thought he was one of my cousin. family members. <laughs> I thought he was a distant cousin. And I was like, and and to be fair, like all of my my family, they're all Hispanic. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so when I go to San Antonio, they're always like, oh my gosh, my little white kid, you know, and they pinch my cheeks. Like my abuela, she's always like, oh my gosh. So I thought <laughs> another one like me in the family that I can relate to. And so, cause he didn't look Hispanic either. Yeah, and I always got made went, fun of yeah, so. growing up because like my last name's Ramirez, but like all the Hispanic kids at our school would just like they're make like, fun of me. You don't go here. They'd be like Jordan Ramirez and they'd be like here and they'd be like, <laughs> They're all like, They just what? like hated me. <laughs> yeah. So I did not. <laughs> and I will say, I also started my YouTube channel as Danny Austin, like so long ago before we met. And like the LLC and all the things were already Danny Austin. It was like mm. so much work to change it. And yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm obsessed with the last name Austin. Like it's such a good last name. It's strong. But I was like, you know, I'm already kind of a Ramirez at heart. I don't really need to change but it. On but your, our kids are Ramirez's. And on your Instagram, oh. you're Danny Austin Ramirez now, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, you are. I, okay, it's, it, yes, on the in name. my bio, but not my actual name. I yeah. would never change it. Yeah, Danny yeah. Austin is a strong name. It's pretty cool. Da but, okay, I have another curveball. Okay. My real name is not Danny. My real name's Keely. I knew this. Are you, Keely yeah. Danielle Ramirez. I mean, sorry, Keely, Keely Danielle Austin. So you buy your middle I name. I forgot about that. I go with my middle name. It's a nickname of my middle Which name. Which Keely's a really strong name. Keely, I, I really like that. I think that. you should bring that back when you get off I the internet. I was named after Pierce Brosnan's wife, Keely Shea Smith. She used to do the, the news and my mom was obsessed with her. Pierce Brosnan is, was James Bond, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they like weren't original. alive. And so, anyway, I was named after his wife, Keely J. Smith. <laughs> what if, wow, you have so many curveballs. Yeah. Also, can we talk you know? for a second about how Danny wore the colors of y'all's podcast for this yes. episode? It was unplanned. Can we just give a round That's of applause? That's how much she supported this <laughs> podcast episode. Wait, did you actually do that not no, on purpose? It was, it was just funny. No, it was on purpose. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's it's the first so time cool. she's ever worn that. Did you also get made fun of for being like the only white looking kid? No, because I speak Spanish. So I oh. felt like I could help, like I held my own. And another fun fact, like all my Hispanic cousins don't speak Spanish because when they came over, like when they moved to San Antonio, they really wanted to like immerse in like the American culture. So a lot of my, <laughs> my aunts and uncles, <laughs> she's just like, she's like this girl. <laughs> not a reaction to you but no like a lot of my uh, my aunts and uncles didn't teach their kids spanish but my mom was like the only one that was like very adamant about it and really? so yeah yeah so my and my grandpa like moved he during the great depression he moved from basically mexico to an all-german community in illinois uh moni 
small German community in uh, in Illinois. It was since it was all German, it was like very racist, and like they didn't want him no. in there. And then there was one family, mm-hmm. the Dierks family, which is my grandma, who brought my grandfather in. And um, it just like the language never passed down to his kids because all my dad and his brothers got bullied for being uh, Ramirez in Illinois. Yeah. I'm actually really passionate too about our kids learning Spanish. Yeah. Like, because I really like that side of my family, I really value it. And um, and so that was something that I I was really hoping. So our kids are both in like a Spanish immersion program here. And so basically, I, in the family, I will be the only one who doesn't speak Spanish. How no do you way. feel about her not the babe. taking your last name? Was that ever a conversation that you guys had? Um, I yeah. think I just like I think it was a conversation, but I. I don't really take offense to it. Like, I think it was a lot of paperwork and I, that's kind of how I saw it. Um, you know, I knew that there was never a, oh, you don't appreciate that or you don't respect me as like the provider. It was just never that. It was like, oh, you have this whole internet thing and I wasn't a part of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, yeah, just keep it as that. Like, that's what people know you as. And so I just don't think it was like that Mm. deep. I identify as a Ramirez at heart. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Would, Would you ever go by Keely Ramirez? So, uh, yeah, there you go. If that's things totally go really different. bad. That's a yeah, good you get, you're, you're, you're <laughs> You'll never find me again. It's like, you have to look at She comes Keely back under Keely Ramirez. Um, so it's funny, when I went to college, I was like, I'm going to go by Keely because, like, you know, it's cool. I want to change my name. So I introduced myself to all of the guys that I met as Keely. So the only guys that, like, the only people that know me as Keely are like, guys that I barely know that I met my freshman year of college. Like I'll still, like I'll see them out and about in Dallas. They'll be like, oh, Keely. And I'm like, yeah, I, that means I really don't know him very yeah. well. <laughs> That's Not awesome. a good friend. Wait, how did y'all, you met, you said Facebook? Yeah, so I was like running the marketing for this tech company at the time. And, um, you know, they, they gave me a budget to shoot this commercial, which I don't know why they did that because I was like 21 or 22. And um, I had known about Danny because she was creating YouTube videos like very early on. The influencer thing was not around. And she did a book review over this book called The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. So he's like a New York pastor. I think he passed away. But um, I saw that video and I was like, this girl is cute. And she like loves Jesus. And she like is like understands the meaning of marriage like very early on in college. And I was like, oh, I want to meet her. So I had a, a video shoot that, that planned with like a bunch of UT football players. And I was like, hey, do you want to like be our actress for the day? You know, like there'll be UT football players there. And um, she came and at the time I had a six week old uh, mini golden retriever puppy. And so I brought my puppy onto the set I was kind of the boss on the set, and I met Danny, and it was it was great. Well, let me tell you, perfect there were, setup. There were also no UT football players. No, there were there were <laughs> there were not any there, a different and call that's time. what I was told. Because <laughs> that's why I was going. <laughs> and and also, I was doing YouTube at the time, and you know, this was like this was back in the day when you couldn't even find like a videographer. Like people weren't doing that. And he told me that I could have all the footage and like use it on my YouTube channel. Mm. And they were filming with like a red camera, like no this really way. nice camera. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, if I can get the footage for free, like I'll show up. And so anyway, showed up, fell in love with his dog, Hazel. The other kind of like funny, quick part of the story is that the startup I was working for was an app back in like 2014 when apps were cool. And what we were doing was like, um, we were aggregating all the transportation options in a city into one app. So everyone in the company sold their cars. And the whole concept was like, we need to be able to get around Austin, Texas with just this app. So like bike share, rental car services, et cetera. And so on our first date, we were supposed to go to San Antonio, which is also a bold move. That's like a two hour drive. It's like, I don't know her. We're gonna talk for two hours. And I pick her up in this Audi. And so she like- Well, like all the girls, I'm living with like five girls and I'm going on date. They're all helping me get ready. And he rolls up and I, we all peek through our heads through the window. And this is like brand new shiny Audi. I'm like, dang, I'm like, I hit the jackpot. Like, yes. And so I'm so excited. We had this amazing date. He's also downplaying it. He was the chief marketing officer for this tech company. And at this party, it was a work party that he took me to. And all of these grown men that worked underneath him were coming up to me with their wives being like, Danny, Jordan single-handedly saved this company. Like we had, we were gonna, you know, sell our homes. I didn't plan and this. like, we're gonna it sell our homes. And, and he literally like without him, like we, you know, we would have to move. And I'm like, 
oh my gosh, like this guy is like, not only that, but he's an amazing person. He's also a couple years, like I'm still in college. He's a couple years graduated. Like this, this, this event goes like, in my so head, well I'm like, I'm like, this is going amazing, and I didn't plan any of this. Yeah, so I'm like, this I'm like they are doing like me a scheme. huge solid on this <laughs> <Yeah>. date. <laughs> so then we were leaving the date, and it's at this hotel, and you know, the lobby of this hotel has this like really big grand piano, and there's a do not play, like do not touch sign. Okay. And Jordan's like, we're heading out to the car. I'm like, this date's already amazing. He's like, hold on a second, and he like goes over, and he like throws the sign off, and he's like, Brr, like he starts playing the piano, like I'm like. Oh my gosh! Okay. This guy is successful, smart, a little bit older, and he plays piano. Like, but tea time. He's a bad boy. Tea he's time. A bad boy. Like, Let me tell you how I was a total fraud or genius. You can decide. I knew one song on the piano, and it was a really hard song, but I only know one. And I didn't clarify to Danny, I only know this one song, but I just sit down and I play, and she's like, he's like Beethoven. Oh my I'm gosh. Like, I'm, I'm impressed. If she asked me to play another song, I would have had nothing. And so I was just like, okay, that's the song. I'll walk away. And the other funny part about it is that Audi that I picked her up in was through a service called Zipcar, uh, which is owned by Hertz, and it was like through my app. And so on our second date, when I go pick her up, I pick her up in this thing called car to go that's in major cities and it's like the little mini clown cars <laughs> and there were often times on our date where I had to be like hey you have a car like could you, come could you pick me up and it was all because we none of us had cars and so, so I didn't find out he didn't own a car for like months like I had no idea he I was like he hey like should we bike cars? to this yeah, place because he, he always had like some excuse like yeah like I'm just gonna be, this was closer like car to go yeah. or whatever zip car and so yeah but you know it works I out. I wasn't in it for those things anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. It's, it's well fun. set up. That's, That's hilarious. hilarious. How long did it take you to open up about your hair loss? Because that's how I first heard about you. Yeah. Abby was like, there's this girl on Instagram and she's like, it's so sad. Like she's losing her yeah. hair and it's just, I, I, I really feel for her. Yeah. And that's why I first heard about you. So did that was that happening before you guys met or was that yeah. like once you were a mom? So that started happening when I started losing my hair in college, mainly from stress because I was doing YouTube, but I was also trying to apply to physical therapy school, which you have to have like a pretty good GPA. Um, I had some really, like I was in these science classes that I was, I was just not smart enough for. And um, I'm also pretty much like a full-time YouTuber at this point. Um, this was the only year, years of my life my year, years of my life that I had a manager too. So I had like a lot of content I had to like account for. And so was really stressed. So I pulling my hair, ended up getting like hair extensions to cover it up, which made it worse. Would bleach the crap out of my hair to make it worse. So through like all of our dating, like I'm basically just covering up my hair loss with like extensions and stuff. But then we get married and I can't even wear extensions because it's so bad. And so um, there's one morning, like I wake up with Jordan. I'm like, I can't leave the house. Like I'm so embarrassed. Like I didn't even feel like feminine with him. Like I just felt like, I don't know and so Jordan was like I don't understand why this is a big deal like the Kardashians wear wigs why can't you wear a wig and I'm like babe because we live in Dallas Texas like where am I gonna get a wig from and there just weren't a lot of people like in my circles wearing wigs you know so he flew me to well actually the first time that we went and shopped for a wig he put in like in his GPS like wig shop we went to like a costume store where all the ways are like plastic like ten dollars <laughs> neon green neon green mm. i walk in i'm like that was not great so defeated i'm like this is just not it so we ended up flying i don't know if y'all know who jeffree star is yeah He's just yeah. like yeah and you know it's funny like i'm not even like a huge jeffree star fan but like when i thought of wigs i would just think of him and so i started watching like his youtube videos and the first video that i saw was him going to a wig shop and i saw the logo on the outside and so I just Googled it and Jordan flew me to LA and we f we got my first wig. We named her Kim. And I wore that. <laughs> we named her Wait, Kim after Kim Kardashian. That's so funny. She's great. That's my <laughs> celebrity crush. Kim Kardashian? Yeah, mine too. Oh my gosh. Um, and so <laughs> that's kind of yours too. Abby's is Michael B. Jordan. Uh, <laughs> we just say this to both each other. It's <laughs> funny because you guys both just described yeah. very different yeah. people yeah. to one another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you sure you guys yeah. love each other? <laughs> That is very different. <laughs> that is funny. Um, 
But yeah, so I uh, started with, you know, I actually wore that wig for a month and didn't tell anyone besides Jordan. Like, we actually went on a trip with my family and the goal was like, hey, let's see if they say anything. And they were like, Dan, did you get a haircut? You know, yeah. like it, they like, didn't know. Nowadays, you no one like noticed. such real ones. Yeah. So I was still posting like every day online and no one knew. Um, but I knew that I at, like at some point wanted to share with my with my audience. So a month later, I did and was really scared because this was also the era online where like I don't know if you remember, like every everyone was taking like perfect photos. It was like the era mm. of like the coffee with the latte and the hair and everything. And so um, my next photo, I was like took my wig off, was like bald, and <laughs> was just kind of like I don't know was transparent about it and a lot of it was crazy I feel like I discovered this like hidden epidemic of women also going through hair loss because I think like men were somewhat talking about it not that it's any easier for men but there was like men talked about it more than females I feel like and so um for that year I focused on growing my hair back and kind of took people through my like wig journey and so I ended up like having a lot of fun with it actually was that pretty Um, scary though yeah I mean I'm also not like that good at hair like so sometimes like I put my wig on and like I'd leave the house and it's like totally crooked and I'm like I need help um but yeah it it was scary because it just it's whenever you're so like insecure about something mm-hmm. and then not everybody else knows that you're insecure it just like highlights it so much more but I do feel like that gave me a lot of opportunity to like find heart in my content and find like heart in what I was doing because mm-hmm. then I would like I would meet people that were like, were wearing wigs out in public too. And I felt so connected to them. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not that bad. Like we all have each other. And so it was actually really special. I also loved it. I mean, like every day she'd walk out and I'd be like, who do we get today? Cause like she had this, she had this uh, bangs Heidi. like wig uh, Heidi. that we named Heidi. Like and uh, dude, I, Heidi. I've <laughs> tried to get Heidi to come back so for years i'm like Wait, heidi like, doesn't live here anymore like she tried to get rid of her wigs and i was like let's keep heidi just in case like, heidi has bangs he dude, likes the bangs i know how you feel though because abby when she chopped off her hair like drastic she ch- took off like what 10 inches or something yeah i'm yeah. one of those people that like i don't really get haircuts often yeah. but when i go i'm gonna chop it like yeah a foot. and i was yeah. like this, it's like it was like an alter ego like a new version of herself like, yeah. i'm like i'm cheating like, on my wife. I'm, I'm like, this. I'm like, like this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you're really hot. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen this side of this you. This kind of makes me think back to the question you guys asked us on our podcast. Ooh, oh, what is it? Oh, or on your play? podcast. Oh, yeah, no, oh, play? ask it. I'll go there. Role play with the wigs? <laughs> no, listen. We just <laughs> went to tried. we just went to Cabo for Valentine's too. Day. <laughs> That's we just went good. to Cabo for good Valentine's job. Day, and I swear, I was like, babe, will you bring Heidi? <laughs> She didn't. To be clear, she didn't. But I was like, like... No, the reason I don't travel with my wigs anymore is because I went on a cruise and I have a wig hanger. So like, because you don't want to just like lay your wig. These wigs are expensive. They're like really nice. How much are we talking? Oh, like upwards over a thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, frick. Oh, yeah. The, I've Sometimes tried on like a wig five. that was $10,000. I've tried it on. $10,000 for yeah, a wig. Yeah. What's the most expensive one you've ever bought? Okay, so probably the most expensive one I ever bought was like 1200 That was probably my first one. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I so I started sharing it. It was John Renault, and then there was a Folia one. And um, I started sharing them so much that their sales like skyrocketed. And then they just started sending me all these wigs. I was like on a so wig membership. So we just membership. get hair in the mail. I would just get hair all the time. And I'm like, stop. Like, on a wig um, but then it was also kind of fun because I could do these like wig try-ons yeah. and help people like all over the country that needed different colors or styles and stuff. Um, and so anyway, the reason I don't travel with them anymore is because I went on a cruise and there was a walking into our room and the guy that was like cleaning our room sprinted out of our room, like was literally thought that he had seen like a dead body. Oh. He opened up our... <laughs> our closet and saw the wig hanging there and thought it was a dead body he thought it was a person like she would also have this like like <laughs> man like, like the wig is like it's hanging like you know where the clothes hang oh, frick. so it looks yeah. like a head oh gosh yeah, it was like so kind of guy. disturbing and these wigs are like real human hair too oh yeah. really so That's like but they do have pretty good synthetic ones these days but um yeah so they can be pretty freaky mm. dang how did that hair loss affect you jordan because i'm sure you know you're you're going through this together as a couple and you just you want your wife to be happy and feel confident what was that like from your experience yeah i mean and you can tell me if i'm wrong but when the way i remember it is like 
you know, you had this perception of yourself that I just didn't have, right? Like, I mean, I know it was a very deeply personal thing. And I think that that's why I was able to have an attitude of like, let's just go get a wig, you know, because like it, it never really affected how I saw you. Now, as you were going through the journey, I think that like the natural desire for any husband is to be like, I want to fix this problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And this was something that was so deep, like in your femininity and all of that, that like I couldn't solve the emotional side, Yeah, you know, and I, we were also newly married. So I think that like mature husbands like start to realize like, okay, I can't fix all my wife's problems, yeah. but I was not that yet. And yeah. so I was like, let's just go, we'll fix it. We'll patch it. Why do you still sad? You know? And so the emotional side I think was hard because it was just something I couldn't control, but the wigs, um, you know, just seemed like a pretty genius natural s solution. And I, I, it started an era of our lives that was uh, just really wild for so many reasons. One is because we ended up falling in love, like we said, with this like wig era. It was like fun for our marriage. It was like fun to go out. It was fun to talk about like, who's coming out tonight. Um, and then I think that what's cool that I'll let Danny talk about is like something that, you know, and I feel like, like God usually does this where it's like something that was your greatest affliction, you know, ended up being just like something that ended up creating so much purpose in our lives. Like it, you know, this whole time we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to have to get off the internet or Danny's feeling like this. Like, how am I going to show up? You know, it's so embarrassing. And then, um, when she was able to kind of be vulnerable and be honest about it, it acquired this whole other audience of like me too. Right. And so mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. it's like, we're not just posting this like silly content, you know, which was also fun and we love to do, but it was like, there was a whole new, another meaning to what we did for a while, you know, in that space. And so, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much to Curology for sponsoring today's episode. When I was in college, I had pretty bad acne and I was very insecure about it. And then one of my friends told me about Curology, which if you haven't heard of them, they make personalized prescription skincare products. Curology makes it super easy to start because all you have to do is fill out a quick quiz online. We both used Curology when we were dealing with our breakout era. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we yep. went through our breakout era together. That's we so did. cute. While our we were in college. Pimple buddies. We were, <laughs> we were pimple buddies. I got them on my, like in between my eyebrows yeah. constantly and we were about to get married and I was like, okay, we have to do something about this. And Matt yeah. had already been on Curology and seen amazing results. Yeah, so. what's nice is they create a formula that fits your individual skin's needs. And they do that using three ingredients that are more effective than just using a general skincare product because it's not custom, it's not specific for you and your skin. Yes, um, and so the way they formulate it specifically for your skin is through an online quiz. You submit photos, you talk about your skin's needs, and then they connect you with a dermatology provider that you can message, and they'll help you create a skincare regimen that is super simple and easy to follow, and also affordable. That's the best part too, because as, as college students, we are like, I can't afford some crazy, expensive because they get expensive right? it, gets, it gets ridiculous and so curology just makes it simple so that you can find an affordable way to have skincare that actually works and so i'm, I'm very thankful for them they they made me i mean really curology helped me be more confident in college Same. because i look back at photos and i'm like holy crap my my acne was pretty bad but once i took them for a few months it it really eased up. They get shipped right to your door. They send out new packages so you never run out every two months. It's an amazing, amazing service that really helped us and built both of our confidences, especially in early adulthood where you don't want to be walking around with pimples as much anymore. Yep. And it's a fact of life, but it's really nice that Curology is such an easy solution for so many people. So for a limited time, you can also get your first Curology skincare box for just $5. That's very affordable. That's a good deal. When you go to Curology.com slash unplanned go to curology.com slash unplanned for this free offer that's curology c-u-r-o-l-o-g-y dot com slash unplanned trial is 30 days applied only to your first box subject to consultation new subscribers only yay now back to the episode that's so cool how when you're vulnerable it lifts up other people and yeah people feel heard because i know abby was so scared talking about her postpartum journey and dude the amount of people that have come up to abby being like thank you for being open about how hard that was postpartum yeah. because I know exactly what that feels like and you sharing how you felt helped me through that. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so cool how like something like we're like the most shameful about yeah. or like as soon as you talk about it, 
like it so loses so much of its like grip on you yeah and that is so true and it felt freeing yeah. like I felt like I had this secret that I was like trying to hide all the time and then I shared it with everyone I'm like now they know everything like I don't yeah. have to hide anything now I can have fun with it and now we can all have fun with it and not take it so serious like why are we taking right. everything so seriously and then you start to think too when you're like holding that in yourself you're like I'm the only person that is like struggling, struggling. with this and then like you said when so many other women are like no like me too I'm struggling with this then I don't know it's like yeah we've seen that like multiple times in our marriage too where it's like things like an affliction that we're going through whether it's postpartum Mm -hmm. or wigs or hair loss or whatever you know that we just so don't understand in that moment there's just like this redemption on the other side of it but pushing through sometimes is so hard but we've we've just seen this like weird cycle over and over again where it's like go through affliction, deep, not understanding, be faithful through it. And then it's like the redemption Mm. is like, there's such a reward on the other side of it. I actually have a really funny story about that too. Um, When I started sharing my way, I didn't even tell any of my friends to be honest. And um, I had one really good friend in Dallas that I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell her what's going on because like, I, I feel like I should, this is before I told anyone on the internet and I had just gotten my first wig. And so I went over to her house and um, explained everything to her. And she's like, she's still one of my best friends today. She's like, Danny, I've worn wigs since I was three. Like, I was wild. She's like, I have full on alope- alopecia. And I'm like, what? Like, we had been friends for like years. And I had no idea that she wore wigs. No, no way. way. Wild. And she's still like one of my best friends. And so I thought that I was like bringing something so embarrassing about myself to her. But she's like, no, Danny, like it's, it's normal. There's like, she's the one that introduced me to like the whole like hair loss community online. Um, help me shop for wigs. What are the good brands? Wow. Like it was just wild. And so there really are, there really were so many people going through something similar. That's beautiful. So how did you then end up starting a, a hair company? Because yeah. like, are you out here? Oh, I'm losing my hair. I'm going to, are you in your garage? Like f- you, doing chemistry? Yes, formulating, literally for, I was. Formulating yeah. You think I'm kidding? Formula? And like, I, I feel like people like don't understand. Like I actually was like, because I, first of all, there was a lot of medications that you could take for hair loss, but I also was trying to start a family. So like, you can't really be on a lot of those medications mm. if, if you are. Um, and so, and sorry, I wasn't trying to start him, but we were thinking about it. And I just knew a lot of that stuff wasn't good for you long-term. And so this is actually funny. Um, one of the biggest trends I had heard online about hair loss or hair growth was using Monistat on your scalp. I don't even know if y'all know what it is. That's yeast infection. Yeast infection cream. I remember when I was pregnant and I was in Disney and I had to do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So so a lot of people (laughs) were using Monistat on their scalp, a yeast infection cream to grow their hair back. Oh, gnarly. And so I'm like, why is that working? So I started doing more research about it. Well, it has antifungal properties in it that... Um, help kill all of the buildup. Like, you know how like everybody, like you don't wash your hair anymore these days because it's bad for your hair. You wear so much dry shampoo. You have all these products these days. Well, a lot of time those those products are sitting on your scalp, like irritating, causing dandruff, psoriasis, clogging the follicle. Like Ugh. literally like your hair can I'm team grow. wash your hair. Yeah. And so, um, so I was like, man, how can I do that? But like make it something clean that I can use long term. Cause mm. even if you do monostat on your scalp, you're not supposed to do that like for over a month. Mm. And so I started trying to find like, not all natural, like I still wanted science behind it, but like I wanted a clean version of that. And there was literally nothing. So at first, yes, I'm like ordering things online. I'm like in the test tube, like, you know, and then I, we finally, I told Jordan, I'm like, I want to meet with a chemist because there's some things that I want, like amino acids and peptides like really good peptides that i don't have access to and i would like a chemist to kind of help me formulate this and so we came out with like a scalp serum really it was just like one product that i just wanted for myself and then i was like okay so many people are asking for this too we'll just give the people what they want and it was like wild like it was it was the craziest response and i think the reason why people loved it so much is they started documenting their their own hair growth. We literally every single day would get like 20 before and after sent to us. Like once people started using it and I was like, and I think people really like before and after pictures because they can like see like, oh my mm. gosh, it works. And it's yeah. like, it's not like some model or ad, like ad that we're running. Like it's like organic growth. And, and so it grew really, really fast just from one skew. Like it was wild. And so then after that, I was like, so no, I, I don't have like genetically good hair. Like I, literally would have never thought I would start a hair care company. Like that is, I'm like maybe skincare, like I have better skin than hair. But I was like, maybe 
I should do this because there's not a lot of women in this space creating products for girls with hair like me. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of the products you have out there, like it's for girls that have this gorgeous, voluminous, you know, perfect hair. And I'm like, dude, you could put like anything in your hair. It's going to look good. (laughs) This girl has, And And that's great. And like, you're so blessed in that way. But like, what about us? Like the other girls where it's like, man, we put one wrong ingredient in our hair. We lose Mm. all our hair. Like, or it just, our hair is so brittle. It just breaks. And Mm. so like somebody's got to really like be looking out for us too. And so, Mm. um, so that's what led me to start Divi. So all of our ingredients are like clean and we have a lot of integrity behind our formulas. If they say that they do something, we have like clinical dosages of like what it actually says that it does you know and so um so no now it's special because i feel like our audience tells me the next product they want so like it was the scalp serum at first and they're like we really want a hair vitamin or shampoo conditioner or we want you know we have like what am i allowed to say what am i allowed to say you can say we have the we have dry shampoo coming out like Ooh. yeah <laughs> broken here on the unplanned already. podcast yeah. <laughs> exclusive <laughs> there's your clickbait yeah yeah <laughs> people are like okay um no so it's it's special because i just listen to them and then just give them more of what what they want that really is cool. really cool yeah really really cool and i remember like a year ago i'm looking at the forbes you know 30 under 30 yeah and i'm so much so interested who these people are because it's pretty cool if you make it into the forbes 30 under 30 list and you were you were on there like yeah, yeah like and, and i saw this interview of you with forbes Ugh, i was so postpartum i hated that interview oh really oh my god i'm so like felt so gross in that and the angles they chose i was like really <laughs> i was like can't you do a mama better than that <laughs> i was like right fresh out of the oven too oh that's not nice i don't think anyone else was thinking that thank you can we just give it up that's pretty forbes 30 under 30. oh my gosh that's I mean, incredible really, i mean you guys are yeah, you guys team. are team right because you're oh, are, yeah. are you the ceo of divi um so i don't really i mean i'm probably like you i don't know what i am <laughs> okay. I, I, i'm like on a day-to-day basis i wake up and sometimes i'm like doing stuff with our real estate stuff and sometimes i'm helping film instagram yeah. stories and sometimes i'm running divi but i i help develop the team um you know at divi because it, it grew so fast and we you know our, our core uh, business, if you will, was like what you guys do. It's like creating content on the internet, which is you guys know it's a, it's a grind. It's like your job every day is to kind of like live your life and tell a really good story and provide value to an audience. And so when Divi blew up, it was really hard in, in the best way possible because it grew so fast that we were like, oh no, we can't do this on our own. Like when we launched the serum, like two doors down in my son, my unborn son's nursery was where one person who was over Divi was doing. And so when it went from zero to like 40 million off of one skew in one year we had to hire you know 20 people in right a year yes. and so it was kind of a in revenue in, in the first year in the first year on the, off that crap. one skew one product off which of one, is what? which is just unheard and of it was and way beyond this is what's so crazy it was like way beyond my audience like you yeah. know like that's what's so wild for me to comprehend is like i would go to the nail salon and someone's wearing a divi sweatshirt i'm like oh my gosh hi like and they're like who are you like, I don't know. Who I'm like, whoa, that's wild. You know, like it's just mind blowing. Yeah. But I feel like the, the, the yin and the yang of Danny and I typically is like, I feel like Danny's kind of like the creative, the, she has the genius ideas, um, you know, and all kind of like be the yang to her where it's like, okay, I can help you find the people that can scalably implement our deal so we don't sink our family trying to accomplish this, right? That's awesome. yeah, exactly. um, and our personalities is like, she's like, I'll show up to a meeting on time. She'll show up to a meeting late with no pants on. I've been it's better like, about it, thank you very you much. Know, it's, it's just the true like creative operator dynamic. And mm. I think that like, we've been doing this together for six years. She's been doing it by herself for 12 years. And I feel uh, like 11. that's what we've, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like that's the dynamic we've like learned to lean into. And I feel like it's created like a really healthy team and respect within us is like, okay, like I know how to, capture the the genius in a bottle and Mm. make ideas happen yeah i'm so curious so you do 40 million in revenue company blows up you're on forbes 30 under 30 like everything outside looking in is like Mm -hmm. this is perfection this couple has this extremely successful business yeah you know their marriage looks good like looking from the outside in like it looks like you guys have it all right Mm -hmm. were you the happiest you ever were in that moment or in that in that time I mean, I think like the happiest I've ever been is probably, I, I talked about this on uh, our podcast earlier, probably when we had our kids, I feel okay. like, because I do feel like it's because I've had so much time online, I'm, I'm very, 
I understand that these things are very fleeting and like they go and like even when the Forbes thing came out like I am so thankful and like the fact that they noticed me at all like I'm I still can't get over it but I'm also very aware that like it's a very like worldly thing and like it's not gonna actually bring me fulfillment like in the inside you know and so um so I feel like once we had our kids that really helped me like balance everything and put everything into perspective and so that's probably the happiest I've ever been not to say it wasn't hard it's really challenging still um but like we were talking about this earlier I'm like man I wish I would have done that sooner like (laughs) that's like my true accomplishment and sometimes I even feel like um we made the list the Forbes list again for a second year and then we made the fashion Forbes list which is so funny because I'm like really I'm like but I I think I I talk about fashion but it's very like like relatable like I sure Walmart Mm -hmm. finds you know um so I thought that was really cool to be noticed in that way but that same week I took like maybe three days off of work and stayed home and cooked every day and cleaned and cleaned my own kitchen and um, took care of my babies and napped during their nap time and I was like this I feel 10 times more successful like doing this than I did making the Forbes list wow like I just felt so proud of myself and like I love I love being a mom. I love being able to like balance everything, but like that's my top priority and like being a wife too. Like that is really what fills me up. But Mm -hmm. you know, you kind of have to like learn that the hard way sometimes. Yeah. And I think that the, the past two years, you know, regardless of what it looked like on the outside, I think was the process of learning that the hard way. Right. So it's like we did two under two, just like you guys. But when you have a company, it it almost counts as like three kids. So it almost Mm -hmm. feels like we had five kids under (laughs) two. Right. (laughs) Um, and so, you know, I think that that was really challenging. And then honestly, just like everything the past two years was thrown all at once where it's like, you know, um, growing a company, building a team, having kids like, you know, uh, managing our extended family dynamics. Like it was just all moving. It was all so all at once that I think it really coming out of that two year sprint has taught us like what is important and like how to balance. Like you guys talked about like harmony and balance and like what that looks like for y'all's family and trying to find that. And I think we're probably closer than ever to finding that. And I think in that piece, we're happy. But I, I look back on the past two years and I kind of blacked out. Like me personally, <laughs> like I'm see like- I the first year. When we first launched Chevy that first year, he was, cause he was b- busy building the team and like hiring everyone. And like he was absent. Yeah, and I, and I was I was grumpy and burnt out and you know because I, I just felt like I couldn't be all things like I couldn't mm. be a good husband and a dad and you know this to the twenty people over at Divi and to Danny's team and like everything and so um, I think that we're coming into this era where it's the reason I don't know where what I am yeah. is because we're trying to hire so many smarter people around us to be able to take things off our plate yeah. so that we can do what we feel like like is our highest and best calling which is mm. like being spouses to each other and being parents to our kids and everything else has to fit in that. Mm. But that's hard. That was a hard journey to figure out. (laughs) Yeah. I'm curious, do you look back and regret not spending more time with your kids then? Or are you thankful that you went through the grind era early that way now you have, you know, the, Mm -hmm. the freedom financially to spend more time with your kids now? I am so glad that I did it when I did it because like, I mean, something changed like when our daughter, uh, turned like, uh, two okay. right so when our daughter was two our son was you know uh not talking or walking yet when our daughter turned two i started to realize oh my gosh you are starting to understand what's going on yeah and you you definitely know who i am and you know the role i play in your life and so i'm i'm kind of glad that we were able to build the infrastructure before that because now i understand the importance of it mm. um and can kind of prioritize that above all else. I don't know. Like, do you feel like you could? No, I'm interviewing you. Hi. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Good think, to see you. Like, do you do you feel like you could have you could do what you did back then with Divi growing Divi now that our kids are older? Because Stella was like not even one years old whenever we were growing Divi. Yeah, like, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, I don't think we could have. I so if I could have done Divi differently, I would have probably just like hired, I I know it sounds like we scaled really fast, but hiring sort of people who have done it before, I think is so important. Like Mm -hmm. we hired a lot of really gifted people that we saw potential in, but a lot of them, it was their first rodeo, right? And so like we're training them and teaching them. And so that's a lot of like pouring out, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's a lot of emotion. If you wanna build the culture right, 
which is what Danny and I really wanted to do, which was like, okay, how do we take our heart for people and a team and how do we extend that? So we like hired a really good like people manager and we were like, hey, you know, she had kind of like a um, psychology background, a little bit of a ministry background. And, she, and we were like, hey, we want you to like love this team because we won't have the bandwidth to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And so um, I, I would say that I would do it a little bit differently. It could be done. True, um, true, true. And I, I kind of like, I don't know if y'all are like this, but I was sort of stubborn for a while where it's like a lot of mentors were like, just do this. This will make your life easier. Do that. Yeah. And I almost like had to fail and like mm-hmm. burn out myself yeah. before I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, you know I'll, exactly I'll... what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I was asking you on our podcast. I was like, you're close to burnout. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard. You kind of also become like addicted to the chaos when things slow down. Mm. I'm like, why are they so slow? Are we failing? Like, are we becoming irrelevant? Like what's going on? Yeah. And then you just like, what more? And it's, it's, a toxic cycle. <laughs> it's, a toxic it's bad. Cycle. It's bad. I'm curious for the business to blow up like it did. What made the product so good? Because it must have been a really great product for people to buy it like they did, and yeah. for it to, you know, get 40 million in revenue yeah. in the first year. I think that it's the first time that a product like this has been clean. Like honestly, I think that a lot of women that are using it are like postpartum, they're trying to start a family. Like uh, there are some really harmful ingredients in some other like scalp serums, Mm. um, any other hair products out there. Like I said, you can use it short term, but ours is totally clean. Um, And then we have really powerful, like our peptides are really strong, amino acids. We have lots of natural ingredients. Um, And so, and even with our hair vitamin, oh, that's like one that I get like so passionate about because a lot of like our, the, like marketing, like if you look at a, a label of a hair vitamin, it'll say, oh, well, it has this much, or it has ashwagandha. Okay, but at what dosage? Like, does it have enough to like meet the clinical oh. uh, study standards? And typically the answer is no. They just put like a little like ounce in there to say that they have it. And so even creating the, the hair vitamin, our uh, head of product development came from Nutrafol. And so she was like really well-versed in ingredients and, and studies and things that work. And so it's, we also have two um, internal chemists that are like constantly researching. They go to like these conferences all over the country to learn about the new technologies and new ingredients out there. So a lot of like the science now <clears throat> is so above my like understanding cause it's, cause I'm not a scientist or a chemist, but my biggest passion was like hiring the best of the best team to create like really effective products. And that was like, our goal is like, I think uh, the, 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 headwinds against us probably was like, you have a lot of influencers. Y'all probably know a lot who are launching brands. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think that the consumer knows like, Oh my gosh, there's so many celebrity or influencer brands coming out that, you know, you kind of know the ones that are pouring heart and soul in. And then the ones that are just like taking a white labeled product and slapping their name on it. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that those was something as personal and intimate as like hair loss. We knew that there were some headwinds against us that, you know, people were going to assume it's just another influencer brand. So mm. we were like, hey, how do we bring some of the best like researchers, scientists from across the country together to like execute on this vision? I think that that's a little bit of what we did different. And then just like Danny touched on a lot of the products that you see on shelves. It's really crazy how much of it is marketing, right? Like they are it's jipping crazy. you on you know, they're saying that this this is in the product and you're like, oh, I know that's a good ingredient, but it's not anywhere near. Like gummy hair vitamins are like a bunch of bull. They yeah, do, really. There's no way that they have enough of the ingredients to actually make a difference. Like you're just, and they're so bad. It's just like this chewy, gooey stuff that's not really, it's like has like a lot of sugar. It's not good for you. What about like, biotin or collagen like for a while i was taking like this collagen powder it tasted like yeah. crap yeah I bought, yeah that's I good a, i bought a the big scoop is good on amazon yeah. and i was like here's my freaking no that's biotin. great collagen I, powder is great i stopped taking because it, it tasted so bad i'm like is yeah. this even doing anything and then yeah. for a while i was even doing um what is the the uh yeah biotin pills yeah that's mm-hmm. great especially um, when they're like uh only biotin or something yeah but i think where it gets messy is like there's some hair vitamins out there that say like we have collagen in it well, the only way that you're gonna actually make a difference with like collagen production is if you're taking a powder where it's like a lot of collagen that you take, right? Yeah. Like it's a lot. There's no way in that one little pill it has enough collagen to make to make a difference. So like a that's pill. why we don't have collagen in our products because I don't. Oh, I really? know we could we could say, oh, like we have collagen, but it's not. You would have to take like ten pills to make it. Uh. So I want to come out with a collagen product, but I want it to be its own thing that actually works. Like I don't want to just put collagen in there to say it has collagen. Mm. This episode is sponsored by Athena Club. You know I started shaving my legs in the second grade. That's right. Yes. You did. I am a hairy queen. <laughs> you. <laughs> and 
And I remember sitting at story time and I was sitting crisscross applesauce and this little boy next to me, I'm not going to say his name because I still know him because it's a small town, but he was like, your legs look like a bear. He literally said that to me and I was mortified. I come home, I'm like, mom, I need to do something about this. And she gave me my first razor and it was trash. <laughs> Like literally, like she had handed me a switchblade. Did you bleed when you were? Oh, it was like a crime scene. No, I hate that. Whenever I I use those cheap, nasty razors, not all razors are created equal, and that's why I have been loving for a long time now my Athena Club razor. First of all. You're not paying hardly any more than you'd pay for those crappy razors that leave you bleeding. Really? Because it is $10. Not just for the razor. You get the whole Athena Club razor kit. So it's an absolute steal for just $10. But don't let the price fool you because it's actually a great product too. It comes with an ergonomic handle and two super sharp razor heads that give you a really smooth shave every single time. It also comes in the kit with a magnetic hook that we have hanging in our shower. So your razor isn't just sitting there. And it's also amazing quality. The blade's glide effortlessly they kind of keep my skin moisturized as i go so i come out feeling glowy super super smooth and i have literally i'm being dead serious never cut myself with an athena club razor ready to upgrade your shaving experience switch to the best razor in the market and show your skin you care with athena club head over to athenaclub.com to try their award-winning razor and body products and get 20 percent off your purchase with code unplanned at checkout you can also find athena club razors at your local target store trust me you won't look back Happy shaving. Back to the episode. We had uh, we had Dr. Mike on our podcast and he was telling us about how when it comes to health, you want to almost, rather than trying to like pick up pebbles off the ground, you want to pick up the, the boulder and do mm-hmm. the thing that's going to do the most good for whatever thing you're trying to trying to combat. So whether that's like you want to lose weight or you mm-hmm. want to, you know, you know, I don't know, make some healthy change in your life. What's the, what's the boulder with hair loss? Like what's the most important thing? I'm asking this for myself too, because I'm yeah. like, I'm 25. My grandpa like was bald, and I'm like, I I'm like, don't get this be bald. man some divvy. I like slide pull it out of my pocket. I'm like <laughs> showing the camera. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's a lot of it is genetic, and so a yeah. lot of it is just taking care of like what you have, and that's why I also like like divvy because it's like getting the most of like honestly what God gave you. Um, but I mean, the biggest thing for me was was stress. Like stress and cortisol will like spike your DHT levels, which also like signals your follicle to like let loose and you lose your hair Mm. and so um so keeping like your cortisol levels your stress down that's why our our hair vitamin also has ksm 66 which is like the purest form of ashwagandha actually comes from like the root extract of ashwagandha and um, a lot of people actually use it for like um, bodybuilding weight loss energy sleep because it has so many benefits to it but like one of the biggest things is like people that take our hair vitamins are like oh my gosh I've been sleeping so amazing or I feel less stressed out and like that's really helping like you not lose your hair too that's that's good yeah mm-hmm. and I'm guessing the the divi probably helps too I mean that's probably why yeah. you probably why you made it yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. well the one point I would I would touch on too is like I think that uh, it's like the skinification of the scalp is what people are talking about now. So like, well, see, we, we launched that before that was every right. term. Like no one was talking about your scalp at all. But in, in Danny's spirit of saying like kind of taking care of like, just like what God gave you, it's like this, the scalp is the environment where the hair grows. And so like, the, like detoxifying it with like the serum and like taking the hair vitamins and like cleansing it with like the shampoo and conditioner and like just really like understanding there's product buildup that happens. There's things that are happening at the follicle level too that yeah. could prevent hair growth too. And just almost like maintaining and preventing is probably a big part of it. Yeah. As well. That's why we like the scalp serum for like, it's like the outside in approach and the hair vitamin is like the inside out approach. So when they, mm. when you use them together, they're like, it's good. I've never heard that line. I like it though. So I guess because <laughs> of that. because of my genetics, will I probably, if I want to keep my hair as like an old, I, I you know, my, my grandpa was bald. So or yeah. my, my, my mom's dad, I think it's like on your mom's side, right? That I've you heard get it that from, too, yeah. You get the yeah. genetics from that side. Yeah. So it's like, I probably yeah. will genetically go bald one day unless I do preventative measures now, or I guess I could do the, like the hair surgery, right? That people. Yeah. That, I've heard of that too. Yeah. yeah. I think Elon did that, right? Really? Elon, yeah. yeah. If you look a at lot, old pictures of him. A lot of people do it. A lot of guys. It's crazy. Jeffree Star also did it. No way. He did uh-huh. plugs? He did. Uh, he got like a hair transplant. Ooh, I saw it on YouTube. It really grossed me out. It's kind of a wild procedure. Don't you have to get it done in Turkey? Some people do because it's cheaper. It it's cheaper. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I thought that that's where they only did it. <laughs> no, I think like in the States, it's like 20 grand, but in Turkey, it's like two grand. Got people it. are like flying to Turkey. To okay. Go. Got it. Wow. Yeah. But like, I guess, can you prevent that with, you know, 
taking collagen and, and doing all these things, taking Divi, whatever, like, can you, can you prevent that from happening? Or I don't think that you can like prevent genetics from, I think genetics are like too strong, but you could probably prevent like a, a certain percentage of it. Okay. But I think like genetics are genetics. Like it's not yeah. really like, it's the same thing whenever like heart disease runs in your family and like, yes, yeah. you can do everything you can to like make it like the healthiest version of what you have, you know? Matt's but trying to trap times, you in an FTC claim. FTC. Yeah. No, he no. <laughs> He's no, like, can I mean, you say definitively me, like, that it does X, Y, Z? The, the, the <laughs> heart complained as if I was like, yeah, Divi like, saves yeah. everything. Like, no, like, I think genetics are just too strong. No, what's funny is I think it's so funny when like there's a new product and people are like, it does this for you. It does yeah. this for you. Like, yeah. like, it basically makes your life perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so, like, and that was like a biggest thing too. Like, I wanted Divi so badly to be like very science driven, but also like an overall wellness brand because I do believe that like taking care of yourself and like helping your hair grow it, it a lot of it has to do with diet and like your sleep and your stress and all these things it's like a it's like a lifestyle and a wellness like thing that you have to you know conquer not just hair loss it's funny I, we said this on your podcast but abby listens to your guys podcast free week and <laughs> she week. she I'm has always so given me she always gives me like the spark notes version of like what you guys talk about <laughs> that's so funny like and that okay, I'll i'm like that. kind of like Something so I, flattered are you freaked out at all <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm so mom, flattered I'm just like I, my mom doesn't even listen to my podcast so i'm just <laughs> oh, i don't listen to my own podcast yeah, yeah. Yes. abby and, abby does not listen to our podcast uh, I, I don't either i know that would be weird after we record i forget everything i said people will come up to me and be like like, that oh, one thing you, you said. And I'm like, dude, I blacked out. Yeah, I have no idea I, what I talked I about. Too. I'm I'm like, people mention things to me and I'm like, Did yeah. I say that somewhere? Yeah. We were like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead. You go ahead. You're good. You Basically go ahead. anything that I don't know where you were going with that, so you can hold that thought. Okay. Sometimes <laughs> whenever I'm reading a book or we watch a show, like we are like he knows everything that I watch or yeah. read or and same. like we watch we don't like watch anything separate but sometimes on your podcast like you guys will be like oh you read that book or you watch yeah. that show and I'm like oh my gosh how are We're, they married and they don't even know what each other's doing all the time no, no we no, don't yeah. read the same books and we don't even watch the same shows anymore which really bothers me and I try so hard to get you to watch all of my murder mystery documentaries oh and like won't do like it. right now she's watching love is blind and i'm watching the x-files so good wait have you guys watched love on the spectrum oh it is the, best. See, she loves sweetest, it. the, best. the sweetest oh show oh my gosh yeah. tanner do you know i love tanner i love, I love every song. tanner more than you love tanner like you don't understand i love everyone you follow on tiktok i thought yeah i've been following people from the show because they're all so sweet i just am obsessed and um yeah, my so my cousin, we never we don't really talk about this, but he is also on the spectrum and it just makes me so happy because he's very like self-sufficient. It makes me so happy because I'm like, oh my he always talks about how he wants to get married and like he will like wants to live on his own and everything and it's so it's so encouraging to see. Actually, I'd be curious, has he watched the show? No, I don't think so. I'd be so curious what his yeah, take on what the his show take was. on the show is. Yeah. Uh, he's just like the sweetest. I don't know where so. this was going, Matt. Where was no, your? No, I was oh, going with like you guys are like <laughs> dish out your arguments on the podcast because Abby will be like, oh yeah, they they had this like you know thing where uh, yeah, we Danny, relate to Danny, a lot of things with working with your spouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, we relate to you guys because we work together, and so like it was like, oh, Danny ended up getting her own tickets to the Dallas Stars game. Oh, <laughs> Dude, that was, I have, I've, that's a fresh one, Matt. Like, let's talk about that again on this podcast. Let's talk about it. What I'll like, tell you what happened. What, what's the story? Okay, so, so I'm like, hey, let's go to the Stars game with our family. No, you didn't. Oh, sorry. You yeah, didn't. what happened? No. Refresh my brain. not say this. Okay. But like, so, I'm going down like on this. Like, I don't night. care what, this is a new audience for us. I don't care no. if they see this. It's going down right no, now. let me tell you something. It's Friday night and Jordan's like, I want to take either you to the Stars game or Stella to the Stars game. But we were not all invited as a family. Originally, let that? me tell you something. We'll, we'll take turns. Originally, Danny had communicated to me that her love language had changed. It is now quality time. And so I'm like, Wait, great. It's always been quality time. It went through a gifting phase. It went through, it's been like physical too, touch too phase. <laughs> like it's been everything. So we're on a quality time season. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to intentionally plan a date. Danny's busy throughout the day. And Danny's a historically poor planner. So I cannot ask her at Switch seven o'clock, what should we be going to the stars game? Because it, two o'clock p.m. she's stressed about seven other things. So I'm like, okay, I gently start nudging. Let's go to the Stars game. Let's go to the Stars game, let's go. We'd never gone to a Stars game before she had never been. I was like, I'm gonna take you to Stars game. 
And so it comes around and now you continue. Well, he said, I'll take you to the Stars game or sell it to the Stars game. But not, and I said, can we all go? And he goes, no, that's too much. Cause I wanted to take Stratton too. And um, you know, Stratton's like, 20 months and so he's like no 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 it's too much so I was like okay well then you and Stella go because like and I was getting frustrated like I was like fine if we can't all go then just you guys go and I but in my head I'm like why can't we all go like this is so annoying that we have this break up let me ask you this so pause do you guys feel this like y'all's kids are really young um but like I had had in my mind okay I was gonna start trying to my my daughter's old enough to know what's going on so I was like I want to try and like do one-on-one -on -one time with my son, one-on-one -on -one time with my daughter, mm. and one-on-one -on -one time with yeah. my wife. Because on the weekends, we're all together, right? Yeah. So I really wanted it to be either I will go with Stella as my one-on-one -on -one date with Stella, my daughter, or I will go with Danny, one-on-one -on -one mm. date. Yes, and I wanted to like all of us to go. And so, but he kept pressuring me, you know, and I'm still working and I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, y'all just go, like, it's too stressful. And so he goes with just Stella. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go with just Stratton then. Like, why not? So my perspective of this is we're sitting at the Stars game. Stella's having the time of her life. She's eating three bags of M&Ms at this point. <laughs> and Danny texts me, this is all she texts me. Texts me a picture and a, of her and Stratton at the Stars game. And I'm like, where are you? I was, I was offended like, that he didn't want Stratton to go. So I was like, where are you guys? Doesn't text me back. Whole period goes by in the Stars game. She finally texts me back. She's like, we're over here. This is I'm not, like, I'm okay, like, do I was, you, I was like, there's two seats by us. Do you want to no, come? I was taking care of a 20 month old, so I was not able to text. Great, but I texted you immediately back. So we, we got combined, really cheap seats because it was like last minute. So we combine our whole family at the Stars game, and I don't know what the learning lesson okay, is here. Is, like, <laughs> me, Are you no, guys okay? No, no, the whole thing is like, like Jordan when he plans these, he's very particular about like where we take our kids or like who goes or like the environment and i'm more of like i don't care if they throw a fit like let's just all go together and mm. if we throw if they throw a fit that's just part of life and like i don't want to not go to things because we have a child like mm. and so and sometimes yes it's to a fault like one time i tried to get into a bar with my baby and it was just they, car they carted <laughs> my one-year-old it was just not oh a good thing but um so yeah, we were like we should go home <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should not be here and so yeah so i it sometimes i take to the stream but to me i was like a stars game is a perfect place for like the whole family to go together mm. So I was frustrated that his mind was so like set on like one way or the other that I was like, I'm just gonna like, if you don't wanna take Stratton, like I'll just go with Stratton then. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't wanna just leave him at home. And then- um, And in my mind guys, I'm like, yeah, you can call me rigid all you want, but I think about way more details. Like we're past the kid's bedtime. Stella maybe can handle that. Stratton might go ballistic. Like he I'm can't really- I'm gonna be honest though, like it felt really good. I wasn't planning on going, but to get out of the house and to like go somewhere with my baby just by myself without help, like sometimes feels really good. Like mm -hmm. I, sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like I'm like, wow, I did this. And like, I just feel good about myself as a mom. Mm -hmm. And and I love spending that one-on-one -on -one time with Stratton too. So I, it looks weird from the outside looking in, but in my mind I was like, okay, he can have his night with Stella. Like I'm gonna go have my night with Stratton. And like, that's fine. Like we mm -hmm. have our one-on-ones. I don't, know. I don't know, what do y'all think about the I situation? Why don't you guys because, weigh in? <laughs> no, I- Because it's so relatable. So like relatable. we go at each other like cats and dogs. Like yeah. you know, all, all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, have you guys ever fought before you have to record a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Dad, single that time. is the absolute worst one. Oh and my then gosh, the it's the worst. Just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't even want to talk to you in private, let yeah. alone yeah. with a camera. And then on people us. are like, wow, Matt seems so toxic. I'm like, you you didn't hear what she said to me all yeah. the yeah. yeah. time. You have no idea. She's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> it really hurt my feelings. <laughs> that yeah. is so it's real. It's so though. relatable, though, because I feel like. There's so many people online that only show because it's scary to show like yeah. even yeah. stupid arguments like that. Like it's yeah. scary to share because oh we yeah. get this all the time. They're like I can't I can't wait for the divorce episode and I'm like you guys that's horrible. That's horrible. That's Come on, that's <laughs> really disgusting. That's love. Like, if this went divorce, <laughs> wait, like, it's it's crazy because I get I mean everybody online has a perfect marriage you know so yeah. Yeah. yeah we're all perfect yeah I think it's the everyone, single everyone people, in the, comments, the unmarried people the that are commenting perfect. those things yeah no 100 percent I respect that you guys talk about your fights though because i feel like that's vulnerable but it's it, kind of like, funny honestly yeah. it's like we're like i think if it's like a real fight we probably won't talk about it yes. until after the fact when she realizes no, i'm right real fight <laughs> <laughs> you 
what? I said until after the fact when you realize I'm right. That's hilarious. I know, I'm kidding. Um, no, but there's some like pretty big fights that we're like, okay, like we've been fighting, but we won't say what it is. Yeah, mm. and like we'll we'll talk about those like after we've like come to a reconciliation point, and we both usually at the reconciliation point are like, oh, here's what I did wrong, here's what she. But the bickering fights are so funny Listen, to talk about because it's like we yeah. all go through those. As yeah, oh. it's too exhausting to act like we have it all together. Like it's just it's too much, and so I'd rather just be like, Ugh, it is what it is. Honestly, so much of the reason that we started our podcast was two reasons. One is like, we felt so, I'm sure you guys feel this too, like we felt so confined and put into a box in these like, you know, 30 second Instagram story clips right. that was supposed yeah. to depict every nuance of our life. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when we had two kids, it was like, you hate Stratton because you don't show him that. And I'm like, dude, you guys <laughs> are seeing, you guys are seeing 20, what, like five minutes max of our entire day. Yeah. And we are also like, controlling what you see so like why would you think that we hate our son for that reason so yep. we hated the lack of nuance and so we were like we need a longer form you know piece of content to be able to talk about what we're going through trying to juggle all these balls in the air and then the second reason is like we really just were like you know coming out of when you guys started on the internet we were talking about this earlier you guys started in a war zone of a time on the internet. <laughs> really, like, like Danny's been doing this for 11 years. We've been doing it together for six. That 2020, 2021 era was an absolute war zone. But that's probably all y'all know. It's all you know. That, you don't understand. There were there was they were a golden nice, era. They were nicer before that. Yeah. They were, no, they were nice to us though. They're like, yay, this young married couple. See, that's and sweet. I know you I got you got TikTok. them through COVID. It's also like when you're new, like people are like, oh, it's the new person. Let's build them up. And yeah. then once you get big, then it's like, oh, now they're big. Let's tear them down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, but I but honestly, that. once they tear you down, they like to rebuild you again. Yeah. So you just kind of have yeah, to weather there. It's their a cycle. Era. Just let it. It's just a cycle. It sounds just let it away. Take the bullets. <laughs> yeah. But we we were coming out of that era where we just felt like, you know, I think so many creators in that time felt so stifled in terms of like sharing mm -hmm. any opinion about anything. And I'm not yeah. saying you have to go hardcore like religion or politics, but like there was no room to be like, here's kind of like my nuanced beliefs on this issue. Mm -hmm. And what we really felt was like the world, like America wanted to hear more nuanced opinions. And I think that like the lack of it made people feel like, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are all part of the Illuminati and you guys don't want to talk about this stuff. And like, there's this system and it's like, no, like we're normal humans and yeah. Americans like trying to figure out like what we believe and how yeah. to just at the end of the yeah. day take care of our family and so we felt like podcasting was like the best yeah, format for that and so we try and be as authentic on this platform as we can and honestly most of the time it's like therapy for us to work out it. our I fight love okay. Listening. Okay, in real time key, I'm glad you just brought that up because I'm so curious you guys are so open on your podcast are you how are you feeling about like the state of our country right now with like we don't we have an let's go there matt we, I know, I'm, so there? I'm like i'm, I'm, scared. I'm like i crack my knuckles I'm like, <laughs> this is what he's been preparing for i'm, I'm like i'm so glad you asked dude, i'm so i'm scared to go there because i know like people get so heated about this stuff yeah but like we're in an election year how, yeah. do, how are you feeling about like what's going on honestly i'll be i'll be real i work so much i prob i don't really know what's going on but yeah. like just yeah. yeah did you see the boards on our windows like we're ready like we're ready <laughs> for the riots his, and everything uh, <laughs> Wait, what? No, no, stash. Okay. what do you call it your uh, uh my prepper stash, prepper stash. we'll talk about that in a your second preppers. Uh, talk about big preppers <laughs> he, too. he's a big prepper are you worried for the state of our country though um I'll so i would say like i'm i'm actually like me personally like i'm the most optimistic i've probably ever been and oh, here's really? why is like I feel like what really confused me in the 2020, 2021 era was like, I just felt like we were all stuck in our homes. I feel like people's brains are broken. And also I think that this is like pretty much proven at this point. Like you only got one side of the argument. Like, yeah. I think it's like, you know, I don't want to get too controversial here, but like with the Twitter files coming in all, out and all this stuff, it's like, there, it was very clear that there was one narrative that was being shown. And so what's so important, I think, for people to feel like they belong in this country is to see both sides of an argument. Yeah, and so because one of the sides was stifled, um, it really confused me. I was like, man, am I wrong about these things? I'm just a dad, like trying to navigate, you know, our, how I feel about things and the economy. And I think that, um, I think like as a country, we're probably in one of the, the harder states we've ever been. Like inflation's really high, people can't afford to buy homes. Yeah. You know, people in cities are feeling like really unsafe. But for the first time, I feel like both sides of the aisle are not seeing it as like a polarized argument that these are like these facts exist. Yeah. We're all like, hey, something's wrong here and like how can we fix it? And I feel 
I don't know. I maybe I'm an idealist, but I feel like we're right on the cusp of like coming together again yes. and like being like, yeah. hey, across political lines, like we all just like want to raise our kids, like be a family, and like we want to see prosperity for our country. Yes. And I, I feel like we're gonna unite on something. Mm-hmm. But that's probably like closer to November, December. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably gonna get really hairy again, like May, June, July, as election starts coming yeah. about. Dude, yeah. I, I feel the same way, because we have friends who are as Republican as you could get, and we have yes. friends that are as Democrat as you could get. Mm-hmm. And I love it, because I want different views. Yeah. And Do you I feel have, like they're coming together? I, I don't know, but okay. I hope we can. I want that, because I think you need to consider everyone's perspective and what everybody wants. Yeah. And I think when you really talk about it, like everybody's on the same team like yeah. we want the same things it's so interesting when you listen to like republicans and democrats they'll be like oh i'm i'm this way on this issue because i care about human rights and then the other side will say i care about this u- issue because of human rights and it's like <laughs> wait a second we're all wanting to like make human rights better yeah. so yeah. like why are why are we fighting and so i think we're all so much more alike than we are different so mm-hmm. what's wild is like are you familiar with like the concept of like audience capture i said this to you earlier Ooh, what is that so I mean, audience capture is basically like when you know you blow up on the internet or you become famous or something uh either publishing or writing you know journalists or whatever and then you kind of grow because you have independent opinions and people are like i like that Mm. right and then what happens is when audience capture comes in you start only serving the audience that you feel like what they want to hear thank you to daily harvest for sponsoring today's episode not too long ago abby was feeding our child a smoothie and i'm like where did the smoothie come from and she was like ah matt this is a daily harvest smoothie so we can give it to griffin it's healthy you know they're delicious because if our kid is eating it then it's good because they don't just eat things because they're healthy they eat things because they like them exactly and they do like them so if you don't know what daily harvest is it really just takes the guesswork and thought and hassle of getting convenient food we are always on the go we're busy people we're constantly traveling and sometimes meal times can be really hard to figure out so having a meal ready to go ready to just pop in the microwave and be able to eat it within minutes is yeah. so convenient no shopping prepping cleanup it takes it all out of it but they also have amazing snacks too like smoothies make an amazing like midday pick me up yeah especially too like i've realized when you go out to eat you take a lot of time. It's it's not quick. Even if you're just going to go like grab takeout, it's not a quick process. So having the convenience of, you know, a pre-made meal, fully ready to go, it's, it's just amazing. And it saves you so much time. Takeout honestly isn't healthy usually either. Yeah. And so that's what's great about Daily Harvest is that it's built on organic fruits and vegetables sent straight to your door. So you got the same convenience as takeout. Then also it's actually healthy, made with good ingredients. Daily Harvest says no to gluten, fillers, seed oils, added sugars and starches. So all you have to do is say yes to delicious, easy to prep smoothies that never leave you wondering what's really in your food. Yeah. And they taste good too, which is- Yeah. Kind of, they have a delicious dragon fruit and lime smoothie. So mm, good. Mm. I love that one. Take the guesswork out of eating well and try Daily Harvest for a limited time only. Go to dailyharvest.com slash unplanned to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash unplanned for $30 off your first box and free shipping. dailyharvest.com slash unplanned. Now back to the episode with the legacy media systems on both sides. Like it's just audience capture, like the right wing, you know, uh, legacy media is feeding the right wingers what they want to hear the left wing. And, but what's so cool is right now in the middle, like the true moderate mm-hmm. of like, Hey, let's yep. see the best on both sides. Yeah. It, the internet is creating like this independent, uh, class of journalists that are covering the the middle yeah. and yes. giving us like real facts. And so I think for the first time we all are able to form new opinions beyond party lines. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's going to shake a lot of things up. Like I think people are going to yes. leave the left and go to the right. And I think people are going to leave the right and go to the left, but it's like, hopefully both candidates that run can realize that the vast majority of America is like right moderate in the middle. Like we just want to, we just want to live our lives. (laughs) We just want, don't run out of toilet paper again. Like in COVID. (laughs) Like, Please. and that's why I prep. And like, like, no, I started, I started prepping when we ran out of toilet paper during COVID. Cause I was like, this is how crazy things happen. But don't you think that's why they ran out of toilet paper? Cause everybody was freaking out about it. Yeah. Cause everyone was prepping. Yeah. Oh no, no, yeah, no, I mean, no. Oh, that's a really interesting no, way of looking at it. But like, no, 
no, I think it was, it was a mass was, hysteria. It was a hysteria. So then you hear about it, then everybody's like, oh my gosh, we have to go buy toilet paper, even though we already have 10, you know, bags in the in the garage. It's just like, you feel like you have to because it's the sense of urgency. Mm. Like okay. that scared me the most during COVID. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can go to the grocery store and things will be like, like ransacked and out of stock. I was like, oh, I wouldn't be prepared to like mm. take care of my family. Is that when you started prepping? Yeah, yeah. Dude, 100%. I've never warfare. seen anything like it. And like we were in a neighborhood in Dallas where like, you know, bars were getting like, like, not burnt down, but like like broken into like glass windows. Over, and like, I was pregnant with Stella. We went and stayed with my parents because there was it was we it was like all the restaurants they had they put like wooden planks on all the doors and and windows because they were all getting smashed and vandalized and everything. Yeah, so. if you were living in a city at that time, I think it's just something that you like never had seen before, and it was just like I never. I remember we just had a new baby, and it was the first time I felt like a protector over mm. our family and I was like oh man like I am not prepared to Word. take like to protect or provide for our family if like just a couple things go wrong because but, you know yeah. we weren't yeah. actually out of toilet paper it was like the mass hysteria of people going and like saying like oh my gosh we're gonna run and then they all bought it and yeah. so now if there's a supply chain sorted it's like I've got yeah. a warehouse full of toilet paper Won't that wait be is it underground <laughs> No. Wait, don't tell soon. her it is. It's a okay. secret. We'll tell you off. No, it's, like, it's, it's, it's honestly, we laugh about it because it's like I tried to start a prepper stash and like I like kind of would do a little bit and I honestly just bought a bunch of Tylenol and like, <laughs> mm. like and toilet Tums paper. and like really stupid. <laughs> I'm like, great, we'll eat toilet paper. But then ChatGPT came out and I was like, hey, I'm a family of four. Will you help me he create a prepper GBT'd stash? And then I. That's sick. Everything. Yeah. Okay, why the two party system though? Because I know like mind. our, oh our gosh, boy, Matt. our boy George Washington was like, "Don't do the two parties; it's a bad idea." And then here yeah. we are, America with two parties. It's like, mm. wait, what about the middle ground? What about the person in the middle? Mm. What about a third party? That, everyone's like, "Don't vote, vote third party," because then you're throwing your vote away. Yeah. I, so you just crossed the line. I I I, I can't talk about. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. I, I mean, you brought up George Washington. I'm like, okay, wait, this guy knows this guy. more than me. I was like, retreat, retreat, retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't like. This is like stereotype. I was like, I sounded really good like five minutes ago. Stop. <laughs> Aren't all dudes just like history nerds though? Like so many guys, like my my college roommates, we were like yeah. snowboard, doing no, a snowboarding trip. Danny likes history. Yeah. Danny history. loves history. But, I, but not because of like the politics of it. I just think it's fascinating. Yes, that, like, the story. The story. How and I, it's just so crazy to me that like, even when you read about like the wars that went on, how young they were. So I like envision like my kids or like like being that age and having my spouse go out to like oh it's, my gosh. it freaks me out this girl has watched younger, every world war ii documentary known to man <laughs> no way yeah it, wait I, band I, of I, brothers have you seen oh, it so of course i love it's band of brothers best. it's the best i love them all honestly there's not a, that's there's one of the a, funniest quirks about you is you're like a huge history buff. yeah <laughs> abby's yeah. with that with like murder shows like she I loves game it. of thrones oh, she okay. loves yeah. killing in movies but she, i don't have you seen i don't really like war stuff have you seen um lover stalker killer no on netflix you gotta See, watch I'm not watching it. Netflix stuff. It's like it's a documentary. Podcast I listen it's a documentary. To. You okay. have to Lover, listen. Stalker, Killer? Yes. Oh my gosh. Mm, sounds right in my alley. Hardcore right. history. <laughs> Back to prepping though. Oh, sorry. What was your question? Have you ever listened to Hardcore History? I it's haven't. Like, Oh, you like but it. But my buddy yeah, listens to this Revolutions yeah. podcast and it's just like hours of just History. really in deep like yeah. stuff you would never want to know about like our founding yeah. fathers and stuff, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, but, okay, preppers. Why? Yeah, you're you're a, you're a prepper, but you don't have a bunker. Why? I don't like this label. But maybe we do. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Do I have Do I have some Tylenol? Some iodine up in some, there. Yeah, we some, have some, some toilet paper and some non-perishable food stash. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Am I a prepper? Maybe. <laughs> It's these labels. <laughs> the labels because you know good. these labels, they put you in a box, and then uh, soon I'm going to be prepper, and then I'm going to be this guy, and then I'm going to be this guy. I'm like, well, uh, I really just have toilet paper. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what was your question? No, I I'm just so yeah. I, we I have mean, you guys need to do it. Hard. I'm telling you. What are like, you preparing I'm si for? But think about if like everybody ransacked the grocery stores again, and then like you don't have food that's true or and like or that's Tylenol how and somebody has a fever like, that's gonna be warfare in the future you guys because I think 100%. think about this okay World War II less than a hundred years ago yeah and as this scary is where as, Matt loses as the scary end. as it is <laughs> you, <laughs> you cannot tell me that in the next thousand years there will not be another world war there no, will it, no, it will just be look, it'll look very different Ever, but yes, all these all these people are poking each other right now it's scary like, it feels scary mm -hmm. and it's so effed up because it's just people in power taking advantage of the little guys and yeah. then it's like okay you guys go and fight like Putin's not out here fighting in 
in the war, he's making all the people in Russia go fight. But yeah. in my mind, so, we're all going to be in the same boat. So, <laughs> and, it, and it's just, but yeah. no, some of them will Sad. be yeah, crapped. Some of some us won't. are going to have farms. Think about it. Some people will have <laughs> land and farms and food farm? and like. You have a farm? No, it's in my my my. my we gotta, we gotta sell plan. Divi first, and then I'm gonna get a <laughs> massive farm. <laughs> But I have a. Well, actually, Your friend Ellie wants to run a farm. We, she, she, she can. Yeah, but that's more because she doesn't like preservatives and stuff on her. Feet that's right true. Yet. Well, I don't either. Yeah. I we mean. want some. We would like some chickens. <laughs> but I think that's how warfare will be fought. Is I think you'll wipe out the opponent's supply chain, and yeah. they'll have 100%. no way of getting toilet paper and food. No, People exactly. in cities. Do you think they're going to start farming in their apartment? You can't freaking do that. No. What like, are they going to do? I mean, uh, you could grow some. You could have an herb garden in your apartment, but you can't grow all the food you need and have a cow. And I chicken. just like like I. I am rooting for the US of A. Okay. <laughs> I want it to be known that I am rooting we're, for us. We're a big <laughs> but patriots. like just government employees, I'm just like mm. I don't know if I would trust you to run anything, if I'm being honest. <laughs> like you guys just don't seem to like have things figured out. Like you don't talk to each other. So if the electrical grid goes out, I'm like I, I would rather send my dad out there <laughs> than the government to fix it, you know? Like, I'm just being honest. Dude, it's that, more about like, just like, I know what it takes to like run a good, efficient company. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I just. Maybe you should run for president. I tell him this all the time. Dude, no. He needs to be in politics. Dude, dude, think you, about I a worse job, you. dude. Think Listen. about the hate you get online. You'd get 100% more hate I know. in politics. That would be horrible. These well, guys who run for president. Media. These guys who run for president. They, you know, opposition research, where basically the other party that's running against you will just send teams of Gen Zers and to research and find the most heinous things and spin and clip things of everything you put out on the internet. You know that how much <laughs> ammo that all of us have given <laughs> people? Like, we are screwed if we run for office. <laughs> Bro, they're gonna be like playing my They're gonna like, clip a, an Instagram clip. Look at this from cringe from music video Matt made <laughs> when he was 25. And everyone's gonna be like, dang, that was like kind of good though. Like, I kind of wanted to be my president. <laughs> it's like... It's kind of relatable, right? <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay, good point, no. good point. We'd be screwed. <laughs> I'm so dead. Even this podcast, they're going to be able to look at his views 25 years ago when he was He's talking to Matt and Abby Howard. <laughs> oh this my guy's gosh. a psycho prepper. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, it's sad because I think like a lot of people probably who get into politics probably have good intentions and then maybe they get swayed by... Like you were saying, the audience thing. What was the audience? For? Audience capture and corruption, man. Yeah, oh God. corruption and, and like, all that. And I think like you the probably money. like think about teachers, right? So many teachers go in wanting to do good, and they're and it's oh, like yeah. their first year, and they're like, I'm gonna be a teacher. I'm gonna change the world and help all these kids. Yeah. Treated and, I, like, like and then you're treated garbage. like crap. They're treated yeah. like horrible. And then you end up falling into the same place as other teachers before you because it's like it's hard and life's not easy. And yeah. I don't know. I just. Yeah, I don't. I think people have really good intentions, and then people can get swayed. Yeah, yeah. no, I, mm. I agree, man. Matt for president. <laughs> Matt for president. <laughs> I can't. I can't run for office, but I think I can be a killer campaign and could, manager. Yeah, and you could Ooh. write a Instagram song for husbandry your, has for really your trained slogan. me well to be a campaign manager. I can't be a first lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> That's so good. I can see you in one of those blue yeah. power suits. Uh, with the, the, the Jackie suit. Kennedy hat, you know? <laughs> no, okay, it's do you have any theories on this, though? We can cut this out if this is too far. Yeah. But why have oh, all gosh, the candidates not been... The politics. Why have all the candidates been so controversial the past couple elections? Like, I feel like there's not been a candidate where people are like... You yeah. know, they have great morals Don't and you I love them. The like, internet? Yeah, I think it's the internet. It's I think it's internet. like it's like politics as entertainment at this point. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like it's like whoever And just clickbaiting things to get like the message across that people want to get across. Like there's campaigns like settle for blank and there's campaigns like, well, He's really not the best person, but I guess I'll vote for him because he, you know, yeah. kind of, I, his values in some way kind of align with mine. I don't know. It's just I, like, I think the truth is so hard to get to with like both sides at this point because there's so much clickbait in just the 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 media system is yeah. based on ad dollars which come from what clicks, and so it's like yep. if you're being fed what you want to hear or, or outrage culture for the most part, I think like the CNNs of the world are feeding like outrage to the left audience and the 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 Fox News of the world are feeding outrage to the right audience mm -hmm. like you know can you believe this teacher did this on you know Fox News and on the left it's like you know it's far right winger did this you know and it's like everyone's just like so yeah. Angry. like that that the, there's no there's no truth really in that it's just like and no one reads it beyond the headline either so yeah. it's like i think it's just too hard to know you know what's going on like as 
as passionate as I can be talking about this stuff, I don't think I know what's going on. Like, I think that there is like information warfare on both sides and it's just like, Hey, like we're kind of all just like here trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't know how to. And what scares me too is we have had news articles, not like we're, yeah, we're not like some celebrity or anything. We've had articles written about us and there's been information in those articles that's untrue. And I'm like, okay, if this, (laughs) If Business Insider says that we bought a house in Hawaii, yet we didn't buy a house in Hawaii, we literally yeah. just rented for a year while we lived there, then how can I trust like all these reputable you, you know, platforms yeah. that are saying these things? Like, I, I don't know, because then it just I just have trust issues with with the news. It scares me. But I think that like I, we talk about this a lot. I mean, back then, you know, the, those two years or three years of the internet, it's like cancel culture was so scary. Right. It was like, oh, my gosh, like I something could be written about me that's untrue. And like this whole mob of an audience is going to come after me. Like, I don't know if you all feel this, but like we kind of feel like cancel culture, like the the almost the Internet and the audience has become sophisticated, at least enough to know that there's like not Mm -hmm. facts being written about everything. And so that was the one good thing that came out of like 2020, 2021. Yeah, I've never seen um, shame be weaponized the way that it did in 2020 through 2023 mm. where it and really if like if you want to know what it's playing on it's playing on our our deep shame right as a people it's like you're this or you're that and it's like no i'm not no i'm not and well, that and, that and people weren't like people didn't have like the right discernment or tools to know what was true like i had this didn't happen to me personally but there was like a brand that i was working with it was a razor brand i was working with and people were going over to like this razor brand's instagram and tagging people saying this person made a certain comment about, you know, whether it was the vaccine or this or that. And mm. immediately the razor company would reply and say, thank you for letting us know we will be canceling our contract. Just from like, <laughs> like what, no one facts, follower, like just no boom. fact and like publicly wrote that on their Instagram. And I'm like, you're listening to like some Karen up in, you know, wherever, who knows where she lives. And immediately that person was canceled. And I actually lost one of my contracts during um, that season from the same thing where like nobody ever like did any research to like look into what meant what, but immediately I think everyone was just kind of scared and like no one knew how to find the truth. We would literally go to like in that era because we saw the you guys were raised in that era. We saw a time that was more peaceful uh, before the wartime of those years. And I remember we would go to bed like legitimately. We would go to bed and I would be like, we survived another day. Mm. Like it, it was just like truly every day. It was like, I don't know what crazy thing is going to spin up and happen. And I just didn't. Oh man, it's like PTSD. We need I know. I'm like, I start crying on the podcast. I was like, oh. clip this, Matt, clip this. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in your teaser <laughs> thumbnail. Yeah. You're like, you're t- there's a tear coming down your yeah. face. It was wild. Oh, yeah. Wild. Man, I'm so sorry that you guys went through that. See, we were just Well, you we were, were with dancing. us. What are you you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, you're right next dancing, to us. We're just dancing, bro. We're just yeah. dancing. We're out here dancing. Yeah. Stakes were low yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. Those that I, I can't believe TikTok. Did you have a dance me. background? I do. Yeah. So Abby and I both took because dance we all growing up. We did ballet up. together in college. In college. For well, one you said some dance so term so earlier. What was it? The fuette. And I was like, Pirouette. this guy. Pirouette. This yeah. guy knows. Yeah. I tap dance too. Wow. <gasps> I haven't. I miss tap dancing, dude. Sometimes when I'm like, we should do a dance class I'll, together again. I'll, sometimes I'll just like start tapping. <laughs> oh, a little like bit. Like whenever, like I'll no. be bored. I'll be like, hey, maybe I'll just. Did like, you guys know that you're in the presence of a state champion? Uh, Texas Western Swing Dancing. Country Western no Swing Dancing. No way. <laughs> Country Western Swing No way. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's a it's a very Texas thing. I was That's on a Country cool. Western Swing Dancing. It was pretty much all the girls that didn't make cheerleading. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then the football players. And so a lot of it was actually stunts. Like, oh. like throwing mm. the girls up and doing like flips and stuff. But it was really fun. Because then we also, like if you go to school in Wait. in Texas, like you got to know how to how to swing dance. Do you know King and King, uh, King and Queen of Country Swing on TikTok? There are friends who like, they throw each other in the air. They do all that's these what crazy I did. stunts. Yeah. That was, that's what okay, I did. Okay, that's so sick. Were you the one yeah. that they just chucked in the air? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But it's also like all the football players. So it's like all the girls are getting tossed. Um, like, you know. The yeah. other, the, the thing about me is like, um, when I watched you guys during COVID dancing, I don't dance mm-hmm. at all. Like, oh, this is so sweet. I don't dance at all. But like, so if you want to ask me my favorite genre of movies, it's breakdancing movies. Oh, dude. Step up two. Dude. Step up three. You? I've never seen those actually. Stomp the yard. Oh, you so would good. love them. Never. So they're amazing. And it's like, I have this like alter ego in me where it's where like, 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 
I really you can bust want. Move. I really want to be that, and I can't do it. I just like I can't. We do a class together. So this is really sweet. So, I tried. Like, I, I brought an instructor to our house. It did not go I, well. I, no, y'all, listen. This is so sweet. So it was during 2020. I'm pregnant. And TikTok comes up. It's probably you guys dancing on their feet. And we're like, crap. Like, who is like, this guy? Matt things, Howard. You know, we're not a dance. And like, you know, we're trying to like keep up with the times, like innovate. I'm like, babe, we got to get out here and be dancing. So every Thursday at like two o'clock, I'm like, Jordan starts disappearing. And I'm like, where is he? Like, but I'm working from home doing town halls or whatever. I find out that he goes to hip hop classes. Aww. He has hired a dance teacher, private <laughs> lessons every Thursday at two. And then he came Phil. back to show me what he was learning. Oh my God, it was the sweetest thing ever. Yeah, you but know. But this boy has no rhythm, and I, but I, I love him. I asked you on our podcast, I said, Did you ever have a midlife or a, a crisis when you had your first child? Yes. That was mine. <laughs> I signed up for one-on-one hip hop classes <laughs> with Phil. Literally, I found him on, I would, found him on Thumbtack. He, would type <laughs> he literally learned how to do this. He was the only <laughs> listing for hip hop coach wait, on we, Thumbtack. Guys, we need to Thumbtack do a take, is more after like this. Wait, hold up. We, <laughs> have, we need to do a TikTok dance. We can put it on Reels too. We have to do a dance together now. Like now that I know that you've literally so, taken dance, dude, like it's I, so sweet that I'm you want to do that. And we can try, but that. he like has literally no rhythm. No, it's true. I love him, but yeah, we could try. No, let's not. I. I, just bust out the ta- tap dancing. Y'all do some choreographed country western Let's, tap dance I'm ballet not thing. Really great dancer either. Let's just yeah. not get it twisted. But, I mean, I'm not really. I, I, mean, I think the reason that they did well is because people liked seeing us TikTok as a couple. Dancing isn't real dancing. Yeah. It, well, yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not real. Oh, yeah. you guys know I mean, Bryce Hall? I, not know personally. I know. I've heard <laughs> we actually saw him in person wait, dude, one time. Yes, actually, we were at this like we live close to LA now, so every once in a while we'll go over yeah. if we get invited to an event. And we were at an event, and I was like, "Holy frick, that's Bryce Hall, like right next to me." I'm yeah. like, As- I've heard about this dude. He's like, he's like a boxer now or whatever. And he was, yeah. And yeah. So that was kind of yeah. One wild. time, uh, I was with my friend in LA, and uh, I ended up at a poker game at his house. <laughs> Wait what? <laughs> yeah, it was the mo- it was the most bizarre night I've ever had in my life. But yeah, he uh actually nice kid, nice kid. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's eighteen and making a lot of money. I think and he's eighteen. He's probably I think a he's like twenty three. He's probably yeah, was eighteen. Twenty four. Yeah, yeah. He's four 20, years ago. Twenty three and yeah, I mean no, that's funny you said that. LA yeah, culture. Living in Hawaii. Um, I'm sure you heard, have heard of the Hype House before, but before we did yeah. TikTok, mm-hmm. I had heard of the Hype House, and one time we were just like getting acai oh, yeah. bowls, and we look over, and I'm like. That's the whole entire freaking hype house, just like in the back of a, a truck. In the back of a truck, and I'm like, and th- no, this like, is hey, me. I'm like, Matt, <laughs> that's the hype house. Don't say anything. <laughs> Next thing you know, Matt's out the car. He's like, hey, hey, what's up, Matt and Abby? <laughs> hey, We're on TikTok too. I, like, yeah. oh I just wanted to. I just love to meet people. Like, yeah, yeah, I just thought it was cool Matt's that they were the person in Hawaii on the plane where I can hear him. So <laughs> if we get split up, and he's like getting this person's life story that's every great Uber that's a great in. quality yeah that that's is great good. you have some really good conversations with people especially uber drivers dude they're always like <laughs> yeah. so people from all over the world and i just love to hear their story and where they're from and like I love why why uber. they moved to the u.s and it's just it's cool to know people's story and it's just you, you learn something new every time yeah yeah you're very friendly you're, yeah. that's good that's it's a great he's quality. A golden retriever yeah i get yeah. that vibe yeah, yeah. that's great um, what was I going to say? I got, oh, conspiracy theories. Oh, okay, God. hold up. Have we not already done these, Matt? <laughs> no, I, I feel Abby was like, listening to their podcast, like Jordan has some conspiracy theories on stuff. So I'm you? like, wait, does he, belo- does he believe that we- He's not a conspiracist. We, I'm not, I'm really not a conspiracist. So I'm curious, like, do you think that we made it onto the moon? Do you, are you the guy that's like, uh. the moon landing never happened? Like, which, I, what type of conspiracies do you believe? Yeah, I'm not like all of them. I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I think it's like a- a lot of times me and my friends, we like to laugh about them because it's like, it's like, um, how do I say this? It's like watching a TV show. Like you don't want to think about how it's made. You just kind of want to be like, this is fun. This yeah. is funny. And so I feel like a lot of times like our friends will like send funny conspiracies back and forth to each other. And it's always like the good ones are like the ones that are so crazy, but it's like, oh wait, like, like, really? Dude, aliens. like, like wait, Taylor wait, wait. Swift aliens being in the Illuminati like- or like you know, or that Taylor Swift and J- and Travis Kelsey are actually like like hired, uh, yeah, hired like oh. plants. Yeah, plants. Those are all like funny. Like I don't I don't really believe to a lot of uh, in a lot of those things. But I will say th- this whole alien thing. I'm not saying I'm in on it. Like I I understand it, but I'm like there's some pretty sus things here. Yeah. Bruh, my buddy was telling me about a Joe Rogan podcast where he interviewed this guy who was like the the person that the White House had a, as a consultant or something yeah. about this it all. Yeah, this is where you lose and, me. <laughs> and I don't believe it, but I was like, okay, like maybe maybe there is something here. And just, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I haven't listened to that the podcast with this alien dude. Yeah, but- it, it's really like, 
it's really funny. It's like, uh, there's, there's so much on the alien stuff that I just like, don't know. Hey, real quick, I don't want to waste your time, so I'll keep this super brief, but over the past year, we have grown this podcast from zero subscribers to over half a million. I honestly never thought that would happen. I, this podcast was really just a side project, just something that we thought might be kind of fun to do on the side, and now it's become a really big part of what we do, and I cannot thank you enough. I've put over 2,000 hours of work into this show, and it really means a lot that you're here, and I have two asks for you. One please share this podcast with somebody that you think it would provide value to. I hope that this episode is providing value in some way. I learned so much with each guest that we sit down with. So even for me, it's just a blast getting to interview these people. And number two, please consider subscribing. I'm going to continue doing everything I can do to make the show the best it can be. Have the guests on that you guys want to have. Um, ask the questions that you want to ask. Even just like topics that you want us to talk about. I wanted, I want to make this show the best can be for you guys. Because um, it's, it's just fun for me, to be honest. I, I really enjoy doing this. So thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot. Let's get back to the episode. Dude, honestly, who knows? Like, I mean, I'm like 50% that aliens are just like a psyop to like distract us. And I'm 50% of like, kind of makes sense. Like, <laughs> it adds up. I mean, it kind of adds up if you put them together. Uh, you know, I have no idea. And like, I mean, we're like Christians. And so I don't know how to reconcile that. Like a lot of the, the pastor community believes that like aliens would be like demonic yeah and i'm like big I, I i believe in like spiritual warfare and stuff like that so i'm like okay well i don't know how this connects but yeah well hold up wasn't that a thing though with okay Ga it was either galileo or one of the astronomers back in the day See, Matt, you're just <laughs> showing me <laughs> up now they, no 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 I was hey hold up hold looking up. smart before <laughs> and then you one up me <laughs> to galileo. make me look like a fool on your own podcast so he's, I, I forget i don't want to say it wrong but there's someone that studied the stars back in the day and yeah. by studying the stars they realized that the whole universe wasn't just revolving around the earth because everybody in the in the religious community was like oh the catholic church was like yes the earth is the center yeah. of the universe mm. the sun revolves around the earth and everything revolves around the earth because like god made it and so it's it's mm. like the, it just makes sense right it fits that yeah. narrative and so when this astronomer or whoever i, I don't know i think it was galileo might have been somebody else anyway, you're gonna get annihilated if it's anyway, not galileo. <laughs> whoever it was th this is this is true though they they didn't they like held off on releasing that information yeah and then i think right before they died they ended up saying f it i'm gonna die anyway here they Release published it. their findings and it made the catholic church really mad but it was like hey look here's the facts the earth is not the center of the universe the sun doesn't revolve around the earth yeah. we actually orbit the sun and so do all the other planets here's my this is where i will leave the conspiracy theory comment is like okay um the whole idea of conspiracy theories is that someone knows something that we don't. There is uh, something that we are not being told. Yep. Okay, like back to the electrical grid breaking and my dad going to fix it versus the government. Yeah. You're telling me that over several <laughs> layers of the government, people can keep a secret this large no for shot. that long. No, no shot. shot. Like, no shot. And so yeah. that's why conspiracies are just like, yeah. a, it's like a fun... Uh, it's a fun hobby. It's like reading fiction or listening to a yeah. true crime podcast. Yeah. It's like funny and it's like we all try and connect dots. But like at the end of the day, I think that there's like this side where it's like we all know Bigfoot's not real, but it's like, let's just laugh about it. Dude, that's <laughs> honestly a really good point. That's the same point that Dr. Mike made when I asked about is there a cure for cancer? Because he's like, OK, do you really think yeah. like think about how much money is in big pharma? If one of these companies found the cure, bro, they would be. They were making trillions and yeah. trillions exactly. of dollars. Yeah. Why exactly. would they keep that? They'd be like, we found it. We'll yeah. patent whatever. I don't know if you can patent a cure for cancer, but they would figure out a way to do it. And then they'd be like, we're going to be the trillionaires now that we just freaking figured it out. Yeah. I think a lot of conspiracy is like, like this whole idea of the Illuminati, right? It's like we have asked people in LA connected to Kardashians and all them. We're like, hey, is this real? And they're like, is it like an orchestrated, like organized thing? Probably not. Like, I think most of the time it's like informal networks, but yeah. I think conspiracy theory is like actually just incompetence packaged as this like really strategic thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah like that's like, that's <laughs> awesome if six 50 year old men got into a room and created this grand conspiracy to do this, but like, I just don't trust the competence to be able to like yeah. actually carry out a strategy. So I think Keep it's like secret. most of conspiracy is like what you think is like conspiracy or orchestrated is just like actually incompetence. Well, dude, honestly, it's kind of like Reddit 
like I don't go on there just for my mental health because I'm like I don't want to read media. <laughs> yeah. But um, but it's funny what people come up with. It's like I don't know how the frick you came up with that. Yeah. Like, there was somebody that thought we we had planned our unplanned pregnancy, and I'm like, if I was yeah. that smart to like oh, think about yeah, that, yeah. great, exactly. Yeah. That's a yeah. great example. Like yeah, yeah like, like and the, then they, the conspiracies they, that happen on those type of forums is like it's. It's crazy. It's like I, I couldn't even have concocted this strategy if you wanted yeah. me to. Like Yeah, like even the amount of times that I've been told that I'm pregnant. I'm like, I'm not. Like and people yeah. tell you this is this is what's happening. I'm like, where did that if that's the narrative that people what are, what else are they saying? If you have piece so many pieces of a puzzle, you can kind of put it together into whatever picture you want it to be. 100%. And so it's like Yeah. It's hard to fight it. Yeah. That's but if good. you're on the receiving end of a conspiracy, like let's say yeah, like- Yeah, what are the conspiracy theories about you guys? <laughs> what are they? Well, that we were in the Illuminati. That was <laughs> oh, the oh, most recent. Oh, that's a new one. Wait, wait, okay, let's ask the so, question. Are you, are you in the Illuminati? <clears throat> I can't tell you. I don't even know what the Illuminati is. <laughs> what is the Illuminati? It's I just the, think about Nywell. It's, the, it's the, uh, the, the, the group of Hollywood elites that are like- oh. They have all, what are they, do they take a blood oath or something? I mean, I don't think it's like a blood, but yeah, they basically all, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I did hear you're part of a secret society for a little bit. You are? I, okay. <laughs> I, it, oh, it so was, you are was, the Illuminati. <laughs> no, was, honestly, I'm, listen, I will put it out your, there. Your group. I will put it out there that it could have been the lowest level, the entry point of the Illuminati. <laughs> It's probably like a wannabe Illuminati. So the story here, this, here's the story, is that um, out of nowhere one day, I get an email and it's like, <laughs> hey, um, we understand that you are a person of influence connected to Danny Austin. I was like, you're reaching out to me and not Danny? <laughs> well, this it was is a great. Men's group. It was, it was a men's group. Uh, no, there's some females in there. What? I, I didn't know. get invited. Sorry, you were invited. <laughs> they didn't trust you. <laughs> Well, and good. I would have told everybody. So I needed to be known that I and was. I needed to be known that I was never in a fraternity, and I really feel like this has damaged me into adulthood because I always wanted to be part of some group of like brotherhood. Lost. It was in a Christian fraternity. You were I was in, in a Christian fraternity for two two semesters. Um, so I got this email, and it was like, "Hey, you know, you've been selected. Show up to this call." Etc. So I get a call and it's a real person on the other end, some old guy, it sounds like. And he starts asking me all these questions. He knows some information, but it's like the information he knows is probably like about like things that could have been found on the internet. So I'm like, okay, interesting. And he's like, you know, we are vetting you to be a part of this group. Like, we want to know if you're interested. Um, and I was like, well, who's in the group? And he's like, people of influence, uh, <laughs> New York Times bestsellers, and like he, and writers. Like, For um, seven easy payments of $9.99. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, gosh. I'm no kidding. payment yet. Um, and then he sent, so I go through like three rounds of like process that they, they orchestrate. Just all phone calls? All phone calls, uh, never meet anyone in person. And, um, you know, he basically kind of like describes it as like, we have this formula for success. This is the, these are the success principles that have been passed down from the Rockefellers and all this. And I'm like, okay, I'm like in, like we're like 21 at the time. I'm like, this is good for my career. Like I need to do this. I'm doing this for my family. Um, and uh, no, no, like I, truly, I ended up in a group with, uh, there were probably like 16 other people. Um, there, it was it was all virtual um, because this was during COVID. So I think that and most of them were based in LA, and um, I even got a coin. I've told this story. I've got a. I, they sent me a coin, and the way that you knew that there were other members in this society was you would do a coin check, and so you would like shut if, up. If you felt like they were in your society, you could say coin check, and you would pull out the coin and put it down. And so I got rid of the coin like two years ago. But um, where did you get throw it away? Yeah, you know, Joe because, so, to so, <laughs> so I went and then I got into some of their education tracks and it was like kind of like good information, but it was like, and it was all like read by this narrator that was like, this is information that's been passed down from like generation to generation. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this is a scam, but I'll give it two more sessions. And I ended up just quitting because but it uh, wasn't a scam. It, it was, uh, here's what I think it was truly, is I think it was like really good for like solo entrepreneurs and like mm. small businesses own, owners. Yeah. It was kind of like a, a a Tony Robbins type of motivational thing, but like f 
sort of marketed as like a secret society. How they found me, I don't know. The other people in it, I, I will be honest, like weren't super legit, but maybe it was the lowest ring of the Illuminati. If I would have just stuck with it, <laughs> I'd have been hanging out with Lady Gaga right now. So I don't know. I have an assignment for you. You need to go back, find yeah. these people I honestly again. can't no, even, I wish. He's definitely been kicked out. No, 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 I'm excommunicating you gotta work your way back up because we need to know and you can document this. You can talk about it on your podcast. I know. But here's the thing, you have to backlog it because people, the word will get out if you're telling people that you're like you know going in undercover so you have to record all the episodes this is like four i i, I wish the, uh, the hardest part is i don't even know what it's called i forgot it was like four or five years ago yeah but that's, it's a funny story dude, that's so funny yeah. actually when you told that story on our podcast i had a lot of people dm me and say my husband's in that too <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow so it's not the alumni <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it was fun. Beyonce who's yummy. <laughs> I, I've been asking. <laughs> that was so funny, babe. That was good. I've been asking a lot of questions. What questions do you have for? I, I guess I kind of just want to know what your day to day is like with being parents, have a massive business under the public eye a lot. Like, what does that look like? Yeah. Also, your marriage and everything. Yeah. Um, okay, day to day. We're both kind of early risers. Do y'all wake up early? Yes, na- yes, we are now. No, but- we wake up ex- as late as possible. Like as soon as our first well, kid like wakes 5 up, yeah, with yeah. our kid, like our, our baby needs to eat, and then Abby will pump. So I'll feed the baby. Abby yeah. will pump. So, so we're yeah, we're up at-, at five. We go back to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's totally. so nice. Um, yeah, so I work out first thing. We both do six thirty or six. Then they get the get the babies up. We start really strict at like nine a.m. to five p.m. Like we work like a normal nine to five, and we have a team. They actually used to meet at our house, but they don't meet here as much anymore. Um, but from nine to five, like we are pumping out content, or like mm. you know on phone calls or meetings, and it's like as soon as five o'clock rolls around, like we're both really strict. Like don't call us, don't text us. We usually don't even like film after five. Like anything, it's like family time. Yeah. And so then just rinse and repeat. We also have been traveling a lot. I know y'all travel lot for your podcast we've been traveling a lot more um but just trying to find that balance of like saying no to more opportunity it's hard because i feel like i say no to a lot of things but i get excited about so many opportunities so um but being a mom too and like having kids that are older like now stella's like mommy like can she'll be like can you put your phone down you know and so Aww. like she's because she's here after she goes to school with Stratton, they go to school from nine to 12, but like I'm still working from 12 to five. And so they come home before they do nap time. We put them down for a nap. Like sometimes I'm still posting a brand deal or I'm posting something and she'll be like, mommy, can you? And it's so hard. Sometimes I'm like, man, I wish that I wasn't working from home so that Mm. she didn't see this. But then I'm also like, oh, but I love working from home because I can just be with her, you know? Mm -hmm. So so like y'all were saying too, like I think that things are going to change like with how we run our business, how we create content as our kids get older too. It's just yeah. like, just being aware of like what's going on. Mm-hmm. I know how you feel though. Cause I'll, I think the same thing. Oh, I should have an office and I can be more focused and then yeah. come home and be fully present. But then I'm in my office and then I hear dad, yeah. dad. Yeah, me and Griffin will shout out to the and room. And like, my, dad, dad. Yeah. It melts my no, heart. So, I love it. So it's just like, I'm not going to get called dad, dad in my office yeah. if I Ugh, get an office I have space. to go out. And uh, Stella's new thing right now is she takes forks and slides them through my office <laughs> door. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't not respond to the fork. Like, I have to go. <laughs> to the fork. Like, she just takes all the Ew. utensils, kitchen utensils, and slides them through. Because I actually... It's so funny, like my office is downstairs and it didn't have a lock on the door before. But I'm also like, I do like a lot of try on hauls and stuff. And I'm like, okay, people are like in and out of our house. I'm like, I've got to stop walking out and be naked. Like, this is not okay, okay? <laughs> and so, um, but like, so I finally got a deadbolt literally put into the floor of what? my, of my, do- of my um, office because I was so sick of being walked in on. And, um, but like now it's deadbolted. So my kids just know, like, it's time to stick stuff through the deadbolt. Like that's what they, <laughs> that's what they do. They don't even like try to get in anymore. They just start sliding stuff. <laughs> do you guys like working cute. together? Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. I mean, we, for like, I mean, we talked about this earlier, but like for two years, it felt like we didn't get to work together as much. Cause it was like, we had to divide and conquer. Like she was like still doing her thing. And then I was over at Divi and we missed it. Yeah. I feel like it, it's just like, if you kind of find a rhythm <laughs> and it's not really a job what we all do it's more of a lifestyle and yeah. like i really miss the lifestyle i think if like, you're willing to like listen to each other and work on things too and not be stubborn then it makes it fun but if we're mm-hmm. like both stubborn in our ways it's not fun yeah because then you just butt heads but i think it like forces uh it forces you to learn in your marriage to like deal with conflict faster mm-hmm. than most can like i mean i can't just 
disappear and go to my nine to five for four days straight and we fight on a monday and talk on a friday to reconcile it it's like okay we have like an hour before we record so like (laughs) let's figure this out do you guys ever get uncomfortable when you get recognized in public no um everyone that we meet in public is so like they're honestly i become friends with a lot of people that i meet in public like they're just so normal and nice and kind and supportive and it actually really helps me put things into perspective whenever I meet people in person because I'm like oh my gosh like it's not just like a little icon on Instagram I'm like you're real and you're so sweet Mm -hmm. and like I love you and the fact that you support me means the world and so it's always like I love to do like events with my audience where like maybe we'll give out like 30 tickets and go see a show or something and you know, sometimes that can be a little overwhelming because you're hanging out with like 30 strangers but I'm like I need to do this because like I love connecting with these people and it like drives me and it ends up being like so fulfilling. Why do I get nervous still? Like I've been, I've been doing nervous. this for four years. They, they're nervous to say hi to me. I'm like, I'm, I'm nervous, nervous for you to say hi to me. They, I'm they like, I'm nervous. They're like, you want, they want a picture. I'm like, okay. Like I, I still get so nervous yeah. and like a little anxious. And I feel like sometimes like people, people probably don't understand that side of it. Yeah. That we're just human too. And if I'm by myself and I'm not with Abby, I'm like, okay, like when it's with Abby, they go in the middle and we both put our arm around them. But like with just me, I don't want to be like, I want to be nice and friendly, but I don't want to be weird and like put my arm around them for a picture and then for it to be like perceived the wrong way. So then sometimes I'm just like, do the peace sign in the picture. They're like like, this monster. (laughs) Yeah. And then there have been times, I don't know. It's just like, I get get nervous. I don't get, I don't get it. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, it's hard. It's probably that's a good thing. It's different for you because like um, you have like your own brand too. Like I don't really have that. Like I'm just Danny's. Like I'm connected to Danny. I think no people say hi, but not as much. And so it's like I I would feel what you feel. No, no, it's good too, bro. Like a lot of times it's like, oh my gosh, Matt, so good to see you. Where's Abby? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. right, right, right. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, sorry, Danny's at home. Like, (laughs) you want me to call her? (laughs) Like what? It is funny because Jordan is, he's so sweet and he can go like so deep in conversation, but you're, it's a little tougher for you to do like the initial, um, like soft talk. What do you call it? Like Like small talk. Small talk. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so sometimes I feel like people come up to you and like, you feel very uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah. I just like, I'm very, I feel like I'm kind of selective about like who Mm -hmm. I want to go deep with, you know? Yeah. And, uh. So yeah, it's like, it's, it's hard. I don't really know how to react. <laughs> like, like, he's, like, he's, like, yeah. he's, he's like, hi. I'm like, babe, be warm. Like say, ask him a question. He's like, ah. you know, like it's so different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Do you guys plan on having baby number three anytime soon? That's yeah, a good question. Yeah, I want to really bad. Oh really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how soon, but like I want maybe this year. Oh, oh my gosh. Like try yeah. for baby number three or like yeah. have the baby just, this year? It, well, is that even possible? I think I you could. could. If you, you if you tried time. right now, no, you probably no, could. no, not right now, not right now. Okay, <sighs> it's hard because it's like we, you know, and I, I'm sure you guys feel this too. It's like you you get that amnesia effect yeah. where it's like, oh man, we just stabilized our life. Life is so good. Life is so easy. That wasn't really that hard. And like, I'm just scared to underplay how hard pregnancy and all it's, that stuff is. Yeah, I just want I want so many more babies. It's just the pregnancies that are a little scary for me. Actually, it's more so the postpartums that are scary. Yeah. For me. But, um, but yeah, maybe we'll see. That, maybe if we cool. see y'all again, you never know. How do you guys, oh, sorry, I'm asking a follow-up question. How do you, because we got pregnant by surprise, so like, how are you? They kind of did too. We did too. Oh, you did? Yeah. So did, were you just, were you just? I was seven months postpartum. Oh, seven months. Pull game? Like, yeah, did you see the pull game? Pull game strong. My pull game was not strong. <laughs> like, clearly yours wasn't You either. failed. I've actually heard of another couple that. So bad. Another couple that the pull game did not work, which is so funny. It always works for us. No, no, no. Oh it God. didn't work because he didn't. Pool. Yeah, he didn't pull. Okay, so I didn't neither pull. did he. And I knew and it was immediately kind of like, yeah. after I was so upset after. I was like, what the heck? Like, we didn't talk about this. and But it was already <laughs> too far gone. And he was like, Danny, it's not going to happen for one time. And I was like, yes, that's what they teach you no. in health no, class. No, it was no, like, it, it, it does. That's what, what happened to us. For us. I was like, oh, that's what they like, teach you in no, guys, sex the pull, in high school. <laughs> pull out like, method right. does not work, period. And it's yeah. scary how many like guys in college just think, oh, Matt, pull out game strong. We knew it didn't no, work. No, but we, then, we knew that. But yeah. like people legitimately think that it's going to work for them, and it doesn't. Yeah. So, so, so are y'all the off the pull game then? I have like an IUD. you've switched? 
Oh, okay. Abby has oh, which an one do you have? Copper yeah. IUD? I, no, I have Kylina. So my, no, Morena. I had a copper IUD twice. My body rejected it. And now that I've had babies, I know what was happening. I basically went into like labor with this IUD, the most painful. I went into contractions for like hours. My body was basically just like rejecting it. Oh. But this was like when we were uh, engaged and I finally got it taken out and like, but the reason I like the copper ID, it was like non-hormonal because the marina or whatever is hormonal. Yes. And I didn't want it to affect my hormones because like birth control and hormone stuff, like it throws me. I'm a Why do I feel person. like it makes me more stable? It probably does. I've heard. I've heard oh yeah, like, you don't get your period anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm talking about hormonally too. Oh, yeah, okay. no, I've heard like both sides or sometimes it helps with acne or whatever. Yes, yes. Um, but mine like, so I wanted the copper one. Well, I got it, my body rejected it and then like, I don't know what I was thinking, like a week later I went and got it put back in because I was like, Fell well out. this needs to work. <laughs> like, and then it happened again. Where about, but now that I've had babies, I'm like, that was the same exact pain. Like it's Ooh. literally like going through labor. Like, no. Yeah. yeah and so good. that one's out for us. Mm. And then, so, you know, but like it's also like I want to have four kids. We're so just like, we're, we're wild cards. You, wait, we're wait, just, wait, wait, we're wait. just flying by the seat of our Hold pants. Up. You're saying you're right, anything? like literally right now, you're doing oh, pull out. Yeah. yeah, we have like you guys are risky, man. You know, I know. You just like Honestly, to live life I, on the I, edge. I, I don't know. This is too Matt personal, but scared. this is like this is like very interesting. It's like I don't know how you feel about this, but it it's like harder sometimes to do the pool game because it's like it takes so much like mental, mental yes like strength i it's I like almost like i have to like <laughs> i don't bro, even understand i have to it. focus so hard so what you gotta do like, is just just use condoms at first i know condoms he suck, would never but then, he would no never. honestly i've thought, thought about i thought about it life and he didn't bro here's the thing though at first condoms you, we're suck, crazy but then after, <laughs> you guys are nuts after <laughs> a few times bro it, it feels the same after a few times with condoms seriously you've never admitted that to me no because that. Because she's like, like why do I have an IUD? <laughs> okay, let me let me give an example though. Like, let's pretend, oh, and it's still, but okay, it's so much better without condoms, obviously. Yeah. But like, let me let's talk about like, okay, Diet Coke versus regular Coke. I drink Diet Coke uh, like more uh -huh. often now than regular Coke, uh -huh. and everyone's like, oh my gosh, the real stuff's so much better, which it is. But if all you're drinking is a diet, diet stuff Coke. and you're not used to the taste and flavor of the real Coke. stuff, yeah. then you're like, oh, this is really really good. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry, we just met them. No, no, it's great. okay. This, this is, is honestly like this is probably the most valuable part of the podcast. <laughs> like, Matt is like, the Pete, horniest guy in the world. No, I for the guys, the guys are probably like, this is good. Like, like okay, like, like, what, like now Matt, good advice. Like, yeah, Matt literally. You, gotta just ju you just gotta do it and you gotta just like make it happen. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I Let consider, me, dude, I considered, I was like, I could just get the snip and then like get it redone if we want to have more kids. I thought, so no, this is what happens. I thought about the same thing. Because you can, but it's not 100% accurate mm -hmm. so like if you get the snip you're not guaranteed that if you get the reverse surgery that it can make you be able to yeah. have kids again yeah. no, i don't want to risk that don't risk that but, it's not worth but it. i don't want to just expect abby to do everything because that's wrong like i know that's how I, fine. oh you I, get it <laughs> like, I'll I'll do nothing. dude i feel that i feel like it's selfish i'm like if exactly I, after how much pain you went through i was like i can't ask you to do that yes. i was like this uh, it's on me i have to be mentally strong i have to just focus and make sure that i don't oh wow, that's really sweet of you i know honestly <laughs> except for we did accidentally get pregnant the second time so i don't know how sweet it is but it's fine i know wow. exactly how you feel because that's what i and that's why i will get the snip one day 100 percent. so you're back on condoms so are you no, 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 sorry, sorry. Yeah, you don't have to be yeah, yeah. You just IUD. do you want to have more babies <sighs> i don't know i want more babies Oh, and, and period yeah. and period yeah, yeah and i don't i don't know it. what will happen like we've we, on, we can talk about this we've we've talked about like matt's done he'd be happy with two i would love more than two but i feel like our i feel content with what we have yeah, yeah. totally matt, if, i'm uh, ordering some condoms on amazon right now stop it <laughs> <You're joking. laughs> yeah. wait Name actually <laughs> wait actually wait, dude, that'd be so, like, i'll tell you yeah. she's like also use our amazon make sure to like, order like, the, the, the awkward condoms. thing is our I, I can't order any of that stuff to our house because our our team's our all team over our boxes that is, that is, so that is a funny. problem yeah. that's so we, funny i know well, what that's how do you like think yeah. Are made? Yeah. well you guys thank you so much for being on the podcast this is so much fun how can people find you where should they follow you to stay up to date with everything yeah so we post daily on instagram stories at Danny Austin, D A N I Austin, and then we also have a TikTok, the Danny Austin, because Danny Austin was taken. No. Actually, I took it with my own email, and then I lost like the email's password, so you know, I actually own both of them. And then Divi. And then Divi, yeah, Divi. We're actually all of our hair care products are sold at all Ulta's. That's so That's sick. So, so in stores at Ulta, you can go check it out. D -I -D -I. Super, super happy for you guys. Very inspired by your success, Thanks. and um, yeah, it's just so cool to. Have these conversations. Thank you for being open like about fun. everything. So that yeah. was like really cool. Thanks for having yeah. us. Of course. All right. All right.
Thanks. Bye. Oh, we also say peace out, dudes, at the end. You guys okay. Okay. Peace out, dudes. Three, two, one. Peace, peace out, out, dudes. dudes.